Well, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim live stream. Today it's three minutes past five here in the evening in the UK. It's the uh, 13th of October 2021, and we're back in Expert 11, back in the Zebo Mod 737. I'm on standby today. I've been sat at home, I've uh, been doing a few house chores, ironing, cleaning the house, uh, walk my dog, and I thought, well, you know what? I don't think I'm going to get called now. Well, I am on standby till half 11 tonight, but uh, I thought, why not wait for the, the possible chance of getting uh, called on standby? Instead of just waiting doing house jobs, why not do a stream instead? So a little bit of impromptu, I think I only published it an hour and a half ago. I quickly rattled off a test sector. All seems okay, a few little bugs here and there. I and mean, the latest version of the public, uh, the latest public version of the Zebo mod, 350-12. Uh, and we'll see uh, how we get on today. I was thinking, what sector should we do? I looked at the Vatsim events, and yes, there's a clone Vatsim Germany, Vatsim overload events. Oh, I say Vatsim so many times, I don't know. But we haven't been to clone before, and I thought it'd be quite good fun to take that into, uh, to, uh, take the Zebo mod into today. Uh, who we got here? La Jules. Good evening, Captain. So nice to see you finally going to my home airport of Cologne. Yes, our first time uh, going in here. Lots of comments recording Vlad, our Euro Truck Simulator 2 driver. He's running late with the Alpaca deliveries. Yes, he'll be, hopefully he'll be uh, able to make the stream in <laughs> good time. Uh, hello, Eddie Mambo. Robson, don't know if we've seen it. Uh, Greg Scott, Simply Bob's here. Sam T. He goes, woo, first of a live stream I managed to make. Thank you very much, Sam, for making it. Uh, Byron's here. Uh, Byron, sorry. It's been months since I've been able to attend a live stream. Dumb job. Looking forward to this. Thank you very much, Byron. Uh, Simply Bob's here. Here as well, Edward H, uh, Child Paddle, Anthony Till. I hope you're all doing well to you. Uh, yes, I haven't even said where we are. We're currently in Norway, uh, in Bergen, uh, as we zoom on in here. Live time, live weather. You can see the sun is setting. Beautiful evening here uh, in um, in Bergen here on the west coast of Norway. Flight time about one hour, 30 minutes. Of course, on Vatsim for the Vatsim event as well. Um, so yeah, um, cruising at 37,000 feet, I think it was, but we're going to do all the, the flows, the checklist, the briefings, well, Andy to read the checklist as usual, so uh, that'll be good, uh, fun as well. Uh, we are on Vatsim there, Jorge. Uh, Le Jules, depending which style you get, you might be flying above my house. Got to keep an eye out for you. Yeah, I'm planning uh, the arrival um, into Cologne. I think it was the Copag 1 November arrival, which is one of the RNAV transitions, which you see all the time in Germany here. Got a fantastic scenery for Germany as well for Cologne. It was by someone called Aggie. I think it was good. It was completely free to download. This is Aerosoft Bergen. We have departed from this airport before in a 727, I think it was. A stream well over a year ago now, so I already had the scenery for it, which is pretty cool. Uh, any real 73 pilots on board today? Probably someone in chat and they're training or type rating, probably. <laughs> we always got people looking in there. Afo, are you using a weather mod that looks better than stock x -Plane. yes this is the enhanced skyscapes clouds we're using today but here's our alpaca airways 737ng uh, from the factory lots of aircraft sporting on stand here it's going to be quite busy going into cologne no doubt we'll take an extra 30 minutes of fuel to allow for any potential delays uh, going into cologne today there might be a few cbs around as well so it's always worthwhile taking a little bit of extra weather for uh, well, fuel for, for the weather there uh excellent so uh let's uh uh, clamber on up the stairs into the fly deck, completely cold and dark. Not done anything except uh, put the GPU on. Uh, there we are. Oh, yes, very professional. There we go. Into the fly deck we go. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Adam, member for 17 months, thank you so much. Your sim looks so nice. Enjoy your flights. I'll try to watch replay this afternoon after school. Thank you very much, Adam, for coming in here. 17 months as a member. Uh, keep studying hard and, uh, and you'll be absolutely fine with your, your wishes. Uh, excellent uh, there. Uh, right. Uh, We'll turn the music down here and uh, yeah, let's get the show on the road straight away. So, battery on, GPU's on the bus, electric hydraulic pumps are on. We've got the landing gear lever down one, two, three, uh, four, five, six green lights. Then we can check all the aircraft documentation. There we are, all the screens are powered up. Let's check the squibs, they're all good. Fault, APU, detector not fault, and we have master caution. Um, APU over heat detector, uh, sorry, over heat detector illuminate as well up here. Uh, sorry, do the uh, fire test. There we go. Three fire warning lights, we are well. Engine overheat lights, and we've got the overheat detector, fire warning, bell illuminated too. Uh, perfect, now we can work our way up here. Emergency exit lights are armed. Here is our flight plan for our sector from Bergen to Cologne. Uh, we need 6.2 tonnes based off 146 passengers, random number. I thought up <laughs> prior to the stream. Let's take the 30 minutes, so that would be 7.4. Let's go 7.5 on the fuel. Uh, so fuel 7.5 and 146 passengers entered. 
then we can call for the fuel truck. Ground fly deck for if connected and... There he is. I, I cut him off, but there is uh, our Norwegian friend putting some Jet A1 on board for us today there. Uh, hello, Scott Morgan. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what stand are you on, uh, Gino? We are on 48. Uh, hello, Chris047 as well. Uh, hope you're all doing very, very well. That's the fuel uplifted in, or being uplifted. Wick our way down, down here. Flaps are up matching up on the indicator position. Do a quick config check. That sounds good. Uh, let's do the cargo fire test. Excellent, that's looking fine. Uh, turn up the panel lighting, manual gate extension doors closed, circuit breakers are all in, escape rope is intended to attach to the aircraft. Black airspeed warning test, flight recorders tested. I have to wait a little bit longer for the stall warning test, IRS to nav. It's going to take us 10 minutes to align at this latitude, which not further north than we usually are. And circuit breakers are all in on the captain's side. We check and we can start the boarding. Uh, there we are, start the flight leg. Excellent there. Um, Doctor on board, Zebra just released 350.13. Yes, so actually someone messaged me this morning and then I checked it out here. It was quite a good little catch. On the Zebo mod, you'll notice on previous versions, um, when the heading bug changes around north, uh, in the old version of the Zebo mod, it was a little bug with x -Plane as well. It went from 358, 359 to 360. That's not how it works in the real aircraft. In the real aircraft, you go 358, 359, and it and then it says 000, then 001. That's what's been changed with 350.13, which I haven't actually tested. We're still on 350.12, but it's exactly the same, apart from the little uh, track. Uh, the track is now correct, passing north, which is pretty cool. Um, 50, 40, good, so stand 30, by artificial horizons 20, now. 10. Slave and cage. Dominic or CD thanks for the $5. Good afternoon to you, Captain. Hello. Are you vaccinated and does your company mandate vaccine? <laughs> Thank you very much for the $5. I am double jabbed, Dominic Orsini, fully 5G compatible. And uh, the company uh, doesn't mandate vaccines. However, they highly recommend that you do get your vaccines. And I don't know anyone who hasn't had it done. So, uh, yes, all jabbed here pretty much in Europe. I think in the UK, something like... 75-80% of the population's had both their jabs now, so it's a, a pretty good statistic. Uh, so yes, uh, all, all good to go. Marcelo Groman, I think I pronounced that correctly. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard as a member. Uh, glad you enjoyed the content. You'll get invented, invited to our members only Discord. Hope you enjoy using the custom modes in chat. Thank you very much for the support. Appreciate it. Uh, LeJules, are you using the freeware of Cologne? The scenery is insane quality. Uh, been using it for a while now. Just yesterday bought the Aerosoft though since I had the store credit to get it for free. Very cool, LeJules. I am using that uh, aforementioned uh, freeware scenery by... Is it, I put it in the video description below. I can't remember the um, the author. On the Explain forum, there's a link to the website to grab that. It's really nice. We'll be landing there at night because by the time there we get there, the sun will be setting uh, in about 30 minutes or so. But uh, yeah, it is really nice um, scenery indeed. There, uh, Marcelo. Yeah, it's kind of correct. Haha, <laughs> kicks some videos as well. Thank you very much, Marcelo. Looking forward to catching up with you in uh, Discord there. Excellent. Fueling's all done. Uh, hello, I'm. Uh, Going to eat and then log on, trying to get more ATC online. Very cool. Uh, Alan Sis says, Sam, that's not even funny. I don't know what you're saying. That's not funny. Uh, I'm a pretty funny guy, I thought. Uh, Paul, uh, Jared, I'm well, thanks. My pelvis is always healed. I had fun with John on a uh, drug sim convoy. I heard about that. Uh, yes, I hope you're getting well, Paul. I mean, you only left hospital about a month ago uh, or so. So, yeah, keep on with that recovery. Uh, indeed. Right. Um, let's see what the situation is here. No ATC online here. So we'll imagine we've uh, grabbed the ATIS. Thank you very much as well minimums, to Aquavit Vital. Aquavital, I don't know if that's correct. Uh, welcome aboard as a member as well. Custom emojis in chat for you and our members only Discord uh, invite coming your way as well. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, so just got the latest weather in Bergen. Now I don't know if this, in, if this is an enhanced skyscape thing. Right now in Bergen in real life, the visibility is 7,000 meters. That looks more like 70,000 meters, uh, really good visibility. So in reality, it should be a lot, uh, a lot foggier. You know, we should only probably be able to see to the end of the um, fjord around that mountain there. Uh, broken is 600. Uh, I'd say it's more few at 600 and scattered. So yeah, I don't know if that's an uh, enhanced skyscape thing, not giving us the correct weather, uh, but it's not really matching what I'd expect on the Metar. 
and I'm pretty sure perhaps without it it would because prior to me using enhanced skyscapes active sky using the default active sky cloud textures was pretty spot on to what we could see but uh, I'll be interested to know if anyone else here who's watching the stream no doubt some of you are what it looks like uh, in comparison to me I think it should be anywhere near as uh, clear as here. It's light drizzle as well, but uh, it doesn't look like that's the case there. But anyway, we've got the weather. Uh, Q and H is 1012, which we preset here. I didn't have quite enough time to take a screenshot of the Boeing OPT app here for performance here, but uh, it's giving us an error for our 1395, so it's around 1300 feet AGL, which I'll set now. We can take 422k for an intersection departure from here as well. So that is all set, 50, and 40, we can now 30, look at 20, uh, loading the FMC there. Thank you very much, P-Test, for the tenor. Uh, what's he got to say here? Oh, very good. Is it beer o'clock when standby ends? Here's to the Estrella fund. <laughs> Thank you very much. Big fan of Estrella, actually. Be very kind. Well, uh, my standby doesn't start finish until 11.30, so it will be a very late beer locally, P-Test, but, uh, you know, it's Wednesday. Wednesday's Xbox night, so that's why I'm streaming this time as well. Uh, thank you very much, Pete. Uh, not only for your membership, but for continued support. Another very generous donation. That's very kind of you, sir. Um, Calabar is pretty foggy without enhanced skyscapes. Yeah, I think enhanced skyscapes... It's modifying the fog of visibility somewhat. Um, it's definitely, uh, definitely wouldn't be as clear as this in, in reality. Uh, I'll, I'll hopefully, I'll hopefully they'll patch that as a as an update because prior to enhanced skyscapes, as I was saying, I wasn't expecting. It was always quite representative of the meta, the weather. Um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, right, flight manager computer, latest AirX installed. We have U14 FMC update. Uh, we are in Bergen, which is Echo November, Bravo, Romeo. We can load in our coordinates as well, and we're going to, for the first of a time in a live stream, Cologne in Germany, Echo Delta Delta Kilo. Our call sign today is Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, and we'll be departing off runway uh, 17 today, 715011, and the departure we are filed to fly is the uh, Tuxil 3 Charlie. There we go. From Tuxil, then we'll be routing direct to Zolder. Uh, from there, Papa 992. That airway will take us towards El Sob. There we go. And from El Sob, November 850 to Labu. And Zulu 189er to Aruna. And from Runa, Tango 858 to Copac. And that is the beginning of the arrival into Cologne. We will select the Copac 1 November. And that includes the RNAV transition all the way to ILS 32 right, which we can expect it, not the conventional transitions. Uh, so that's all good. Activate, I'll execute that. And we'll continue with the performance. So 0 fuel weight 55.8. Uh, based off our uh, traffic load, which includes 146 passengers. Our reserves to get to Frankfurt Hahn, that's our alternate. Uh, that is uh, 2 tonnes. Cost index 30. 37,000 feet is our cruise level today. And our top of climb wind is 330 at 70. We've got a lovely tailwind pushing us southbound for the initial part of this sector. Our average wind is 342 at 69, so you want to go here to route data. First waypoint after top of climb is Elgic. We'll stick it in there. Average wind 342 at 69. That is all done. Uh, there we go. Performance wise then we need to finish this. Minus one for the ISO deviation. That is executed from our OPT then, the real OPT, via the Alpha 4 intersection, we can take full 22k. So if I go here to airport, just to show you, uh, via Alpha 4, so we're here on this stand, we can actually take this intersection for departure. We'll, we'll just wait in line, like, uh, you know, we'll, be, uh, we'll wait our turn, but we can take 22k from Alpha 4. That's our performance there. So full 22k. Uh, it's giving us a N1 of 90.3, 91.5. That makes sense because we don't have the AP on at the moment. Is it really zero degrees outside? No, I was going to say. Ah, there's aircraft everywhere now. Oh, my days. Uh, I think that's a little bug because it does say 10 degrees and the actual Metar says 7. 
what's going on? Have I actually turned Active Sky on? Let me just check this. That's really unusual because usually it's bang 50, on. 40, 30, I'm not sure 20, what's going on there. 10. Hello Noah, hope you're doing well. Was I checked to Active Sky here to make sure it's all working correctly? Playing flight sim at work, you cheeky boy. E -E -I. <laughs> How much time do you have to get to work while on home standby? It's three hours for my company. Oh, no, we don't have that much time, Noah. Thank you very much for five dollars. That's very kind of you, sir. Uh, it's a one hour. We have to be in one hour of uh, them calling us and reporting to the aircraft, so you've got to be quite close. Now, the, the chances of you having to actually get there as quickly as possible, well, uh, I'd say it's not that unusual. It's more likely they'll give you plenty of notice if someone calls in sick at good time, but um, no, if someone calls in sick last minute, yeah, they, they need you to get there within an hour uh, to minimise the sort of delay there. So, yeah, I live within 30 minutes of the airport. My bag is ready to go, always, by the door, and my uniform is, you know, it's just hanging up in my bedroom, so I just quickly change clothes. Um, nip into the shop, there's uh, plenty of uh, shops around the airport, and also where I live, so it's not an issue. Uh, if I need to get some uh, food and drink, and, and then I can crack on there. Uh, cool. Uh, right, I don't know what's going on then, because Active Sky is up and running. Uh, it says that, uh, looking here, yeah, it's saying 10 degrees, few at 1500, broken at 3000, so it's not actually reading the weather from the Meta here at, um, at Bergen for some reason. That's very unusual. Well, what's this going on? Well, he's actually on a stand, technically. Uh, 47, it's getting super busy here in the apron. Um, right, I think we've loaded the FMC, we've done the performance, little bug here, it should be 10. I think it's just saying zero, but I'm pretty confident it's meant to be 10. Uh, flat 5, uh, wet speeds, 130, 137, 144. 50, 40, 129, 137, 30, 144, so they pretty much 20, match. 10, the OBT says trim is going to be 5.75. Boo rack! Oh! To the best and the most humble captain. Cheers. Oh my days. Boo rack. Weld. He just dropped 100 quid. Oh, you don't want to screw. Yeah, oh, that's very, very generous of you. Oh, I don't know what to say. Burak, one of the members uh, from Turkey, he's been a member for some time on the channel, supporting me for the whole time. He's just dropped a hundred quid dodo. I don't know what to say, man. That's that's insane. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, more Estrella. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. I just I don't know what to say to that, man. Unbelievable. Thank you. Um, v speeds 29, 37, 44. That's set. Ah, oh, jeebus. Well, next month I'll be talking to you guys because I need to uh, get the PC ordered, my ne my next PC, so this will all be contributed towards that, so it's uh, looking very, very good. Uh, I'll be able to get myself a super rig with all your generosity. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Um, right, we've loaded up the flight management computer. V-speed to set trim, 5.75 units, 5.75 units dialing in. And let's do our overhead panel scan, see if there's any online ATC, and go from there. So, no lights on, nav transfer display switches are normal auto, fuel, just the main tank pumps on. We've got no fuel in the centre tank today, it is empty. Bright, dim, I just about saw it, and bright and off, the rest is looking okay. We'll get that APU up and running now as well. There it goes, uh, window heats. We could turn on, electric hydraulic pumps are on, and all looking good here. Voice recorder, we turn on for our briefings. Trim air on, packs auto, cruising at 37,000 feet. The elevation is 306 feet in Cologne, so I preset that to 300, and that is set to steady. Flight directors, we can now pop on. Let's have a look at the runway QDM here. It is 170 degrees, so we'll set 170 on the heading. You hear the APU booting up in the background. With the door open, you can hear the um, APU starting, but when the aircraft starts filling up with passengers uh, and everyone's talking and the PA, the boarding PA music's on, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to hear. Um, so that's all set. I think the SID stop altitude or level is 6,000 feet, so I'm going to put 6 1 because I haven't got a clearance yet. I'll get the APU on the bus and we'll ditch the GPU. There we are, that's disconnected. So MCP is set for us for now. It's a very simple straight ahead SID. And that's looking good. Trim set, stab trim cut switch is normal. And that's all looking hunky dory. We can actually do our stall uh, warning test now. There we go. 
Perfect. Hi Tim, hope you're doing well. So that should have been spent towards a ring mind, yeah, probably. Uh, Marcello, um, he's a real gentleman. I know he is. Unbelievable. Uh, very, very kind from Burak there. Merkin approaches online. Fantastic. Very good. Uh, the jewels, do we have the Honeywell MCP in your fleet in real life? Yes, we do have some NGs which do have the Honeywell uh, MCP. Uh, not many. I've certainly flown it. and uh, I think I made a community post about two months ago when Zebo added the Honeywell MCP, comparing it to ours. It was, it was identical. Absolutely identical there. Um, perfect. Let's uh, grab them. We have Tower Online as well. Let's grab our clearance from there. Uh, all we have left to do is get our clearance, brief the departure and do the checklist and we're very good for time. We're due at seven minutes. So let's just get better pushback connected first. Ground to cockpit, please show me where you want to go. Yes ma'am. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. Let's connect first then, perfect. Uh, and let's grab some uh, ETC. I had a few issues with my Logitech radio tuning panel. Massive thank you to uh, Romulus and oh, I've forgotten the name. Who else is helping me um, in, in Discord? I've completely forgotten now. But you know who you are, thank you. But I've got the Logitech radio tuning panel working all now again. I needed to update some plugins in the background and make changes to my USB settings. Uh, it's all looking good. Uh, uh, three, Charlie. Alpaca 1 Charlie, squawk 5011. 5011, sorry. Alpaca 3 Charlie. Let's grab the clearance. Busy, busy now, though. Everyone's going to be getting their clearance. Much cheer for the yeah, usual pushback, fella. Absolutely. All doors and hedges are opposed, ready to connect. Excellent. Uh, Justin Rose, how do you get Avi Tab to display on your screen like that? Like this? Uh, I have uh, a the Avitab plugin, and then I can toggle tablet, and I've assigned that to a button on my keyboard, Control A. Uh, and then obviously you can have it on the um, here, but it doesn't look as clear on the EFB as it does when I bring up the plugin like this. It's a lot crisper. Uh, tower, good day. It's Alpaca Eight Delta Kilo Stand Four Eight. Request departure clearance to Cologne, please. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo Flesla Tower, good afternoon. I wish to you continue to kill to seal 3 Charlie departure. Mr. your climb 6000 feet, squawk 1363. Uh, cleared to Cologne on the Tuxil 3 Charlie departure, climb 6000 feet, squawk 1363, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, part of your transmission was black. Yeah, can you please pre repeat that? I think someone's stepping on the. Uh, it's uh, the Tuxel 3 Charlie, 6,000 feet, squawking 1363, I'll pack 8 Delta Kilo. I'll pack 8 Delta Kilo, we make it straight. Yeah, that's weird. I think someone I think someone was stepping on me there, but I just noticed on my X Pilot clients the transmit button was stuck down, so I just wanted to make sure I was uh, blocking anyone there. But anyway, squawking one three six three uh, six thousand feet, and we can verify the Tuxil three Charlie. There it is in the flight management computer. So let's just carry on with our Packer one three Charlie uh, requesting push and stop. Just turn the volume down here, so we can still hear what's going on. Uh, cool. So we are on stand uh, forty eight here. Hopefully, going to be a Longish pushback to go onto the taxiway uh, whiskey to face north, and eventually we'll head on on the uh, only taxiway to get towards Route 115. Well, actually, not the only taxiway. We have whiskey and Yankee, uh, and then we have performance fire Alpha 4 departure, which we could use. And our SID, which we've just been cleared on, the Tuxil 3 Charlie, RNAV 1 SID, uh, non RNAV 1 aircraft, so if we're in the um, 747 or the 727 Classic, at first contact with Friesland, say, unable RNAV due reason, <laughs> old knackered aircraft, uh, but you can fly only directional departures. Uh, but for us, uh, our departure is going to be straight ahead to Unput, there's Unput, and then to Bamlo. Bamlo, and then from Bamlo to Amexi, Amexi 160 above, that checks in the FMC, and then to Tuxil, Tuxil. Tracks and distances all make sense. Initial climb clearance is 6,000 feet, so we'll punch in 6,000 feet in the FMC as well. And 
that's all to do with uh, loss of comms. It's just a, a dead arrow straight line. That's what we'd like to see. And an Arnavsid as well. There we are, we briefed everything then. Uh, we better wake up Andy because it's now time to read some checklists. So let me just grab the checklist here in the background. Excuse me whilst I stare up at the roof. It just gives me a little bit more FPS so we can actually open up the, the checklist here, which I forgot to open before the start of the stream. So where are you, Andy? Uh, downloads, checklists, there we go. Perfect. So then, Andy, could you give me the safety inspection checklist, please? Here it comes. Safety inspection checklist. Yes, Sandy. Surfaces and chop. Checked. Maintenance status. Checked. Battery. Is on. Electric hydraulic pump. On. Landing gear lever. Down. Ship's library. Checked. Safety inspection checklist complete. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andy. The safety inspection checklist is complete. If you would like to download Andy as a checklist, you can use the command exclamation mark Andy in chat. And it's just a pre-recorded uh, .wav file you can uh, play and then you can respond to the checklist. If you want to hear or learn what the responses are, they are printed out here on the checklist so you can find out what you have to say in response. But it is the correct checklist. Uh, that we use here. Uh, what the heck is that sound, said Tom? That's Andy. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Andy, could I have the uh, before start checklist, please? Before start checklist to the line. Thank you. IRS mode select. They are nav. Gear pins. Removed. Light test. Uh, I've not done the light test, Andy. Let's do that now. And that's why we have checklists. So light test is all looking good here. Perfect. So the light test is checked. Uh, rest the checklist, please, Andy. Oxygen. Uh, tested and... It, oh, no, that would actually fail. We're, we're AOG. <laughs> we need to get a little yellow crap there, but uh, we don't have that there. Oh, uh, tested 100%, Andy. Your damper. Uh, is on. Well, Nav transfer and display switches. Normal auto. Fuel. So for fuel, we need to check out our operational flight plan. Let's grab that here. Uh, so fuel, we require a minimum of 6213. We have uh, 75 on board and 4 pumps on. Cabin util IFE galley power. Is on. Emergency exit lights. Armed. Fasten belt. On. Window heat. On. Air conditioning and pressurization. That is Pax Auto bleeds on and set for clone. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Instrument. Cross checked. Auto brake. RTO. Hydraulics. So let's go here to system. We have at least uh, no RF indication and over 2,800 psi. Just uh, hydraulics are normal. Speed brake. That is down detent. Parking brake. Set. Stab trim cutout switches. Normal. Wheel well fire warning. Checked. Radios, radar and transponder. Set and standby. Rudder and aileron trim. Three and zero. Takeoff briefing. Discussed. PA. Is complete. <laughs> FMC CDU. Uh, set. N1 and IAS bugs. Not quite set, actually need the takeoff page there. So N1 IAS bugs, we have auto, 22k, uh, speeds are 22, 29, 37, 44 set. Stab trim. 5.75 units. Performance, sets. weight and balance. Side set. Phones. Off. EFB. Uh, airplane mode stowed. Flight deck windows and cockpit door. Ah, yes. Uh, last time we did this, I left all the doors open. So let's actually close the doors now. So ground services doors. Uh, it's really confusing, this one. So close, close. And I need to retract the air stairs. Which is here. And closed. You can hear the L1 door closing. Clunk. Uh, they are closed, Andy. Doors. Uh, thanks, closed. Passengers. Seated. Before start checklist completed to the line. Ah, excellent, Andy. Thank you so much. We're all ready to go. Uh, Q&H, Angels Aviation, should be set. 1012. Um, remember that only... Uh, is, well, it should be that quite far off. Um, but it is set, you know... It's under reading by about 100 feet, but sometimes due to the elevation of the apron, uh, it doesn't quite read exactly on the yellow line, but that is a little bit excessive. Um, the aerodrome elevation here in Bergen, what is that? 166 feet, and it's indicating 150 feet. But we do have the correct QNH set, oh, certainly according to um, the, the Metar, anyway, that's what we have there. 
Uh, perfect. So, I think we're ready to go. And we'll now request uh, push and start from ATC. There we go. Oh my gosh, my FPS. Rip. Uh, I don't think we've forgotten anything. We just need to do the before uh, start check this by the line. Uh, John, the only problem with having a competent FO like Andy is who will the captain blame when things go wrong? Andy. <laughs> uh, Angel Aviation phoned off, I hope not, otherwise we will have to uh, report to Chief Pilot if we're calling you a donut, answer. <laughs> My real phone is on. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, stand uh, for 8, request push and start. Welcome. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, stand by. Perfect, so a bit of a queue. Is it Jim at the jump seat? Yes, technically, I suppose he is. The Jules has enhanced skyscapes improved since the initial release. I still have the most uh, the most recent one, this sort of rusty brown effect, I think they're toning down in an upcoming update, because that is very hellish, doesn't quite, I've never seen those sort of colours, but um, uh, it is a little bit of an FPS impact for me, um, which means when I'm looking at this right now, I'm hitting about 25, 35 FPS, and if I look up, see how it goes up to 50? That means everything in the background I can move, Like if, but if I'm here, it's a little bit stuttery, you won't notice it, but I do. And when I'm moving things in the background, it's a bit delayed. So when I'm playing checklists and things like that, it um, doesn't come across. Um, for me, it's, it's not so smooth. So actually, let's do below. Uh, ten, seven, two, six. My contact now approach one to one decimal zero. So long. One to one decimal zero. Look at two six, Mike. Thanks for your service. See you next time. Steve, have you downloaded the latest patch of Skyscapes? I saw it on the notepad, I downloaded it earlier, but the latest patch was only the one it mentioned uh, before I downloaded it. Busy, busy, busy. Oh, damn it, that's the. Yeah. That's that guy there. That's good for me, though, facing west. Then. Alpaca 13 Charlie, uh, request taxi. Alpaca 13 Charlie, taxi, Mike, go, Yankee, there. holding point to runway 17. So my pushback's a bit awkward because. Taxi, I'm just block uh, the taxi right. there is a second Mike, taxi right uh, there. Golf, Yankee, runway 17, holding point. Uh, Robson, uh, is your uh, anxious guy definitely on live Charlie. weather? Uh, just double check. We were, we were discussing this earlier. Uh, um, sorry, if, if, because of the uh, FPS, I have to look up, guys. Honestly, it makes everything else grind to a halt. Ah, hold on. No, QNH1017. That can't be right. Weather control. Sweet. It's not on live weather. Why was that on the on live weather? It wasn't actually on live weather, which is why it was differing so much. That's more like it! <laughs> there we go. Uh, can we have, are you a professional streamer in live chat, please? I had it off live weather the whole time. That's more like 50, what the meta are saying. 40, 30, 20, <laughs> Thanks, Robson. 10. Oh dear. Thank you, Tim Fraser. Very generous for the 20 quid there. Thank you. 
been working my balls off. Lovely. Had a pay rise. Taking the family on holiday next week. Finally going to have to not drive a truck for Round a week. Up, back, Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim Fraser. Um, I'm glad to hear that you've been working extremely hard. <laughs> and it sounds like it's paid off and you do work very hard and you've got a big family to look after there. So have a great, uh, a great holiday. <laughs> And uh, have a break from uh, driving your truck around. Appreciate your continued support for my longest members of the channel. Thank you very much, buddy. Very kind. Excellent. Right, let's request push to start. And uh, ground, very good evening. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo stand 4 8. Alpaca 1 3 Charlie, sorry, 1 take the next left and then uh, right. I'm having problems with um, exits. So, so basically, I think. Because the FPS, when I'm pushing the push to transmit button, it's not actually pushing it. But if I look up and push it, it is working. That's strange. This is the professionalism I tune in for. What's that referring to? The comment by Tim. Ah <laughs> oh dear. Back on one three Charlie. Contact Tower on one one nine zero decimal one. One one nine zero decimal one for back one three Charlie. It's down. Yeah, so basically, when I push my push to talk, it's not actually transmitting. If I look up, I can transmit. So basically, my FPS and this stuttering, which you can't really see, is affecting my ability to transmit on the radio. It's a real pain. Ground, hello, Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, stand 48, request push and start in sequence. Uh, back at 8, Delta Kilo, are you able to push up the whiskey to take a right turn on the Delta? A firm, I'll pack 8, Delta Kilo. Yeah, back at 8, Delta Roger, push, push start approved, QNH 1012. Push start approved, QNH 1012, uh, push uh, onto whiskey to make a right turn out of Delta, I'll pack 8, Delta Kilo. Right, let's see exactly what it was he wanted, so... Yeah, that's. Um, I might have to re. I might have to look into getting these clouds. Or certainly lowering the settings here because it's affecting. So that's uh, push onto whiskey to make a right turn on delta. Okay, I understand. So it's quite a long push. Ground cockpit, please show me where you want to go. So it's going to be something like this. Fifty. 40, 30, 20, and then right turn on Delta will be like that. Perfect. Thank you, Tim, again. Tim! Still connected and bypass pin inserted. Release marking break. Tim, thank you very much for 50 quid, man. That's that's crazy. Uh, I know you got a pay rise, but get that, get something for your kids, man. Get something for your kids. They're far more deserving and uh, that sort of stuff. And that's very gentry. Thank you. I'll make sure I get Jack some treats anyway. Uh, and uh, yes, some fuel too. Uh, that will certainly fill it up. Uh, very, very kind. Thank you. Right. Anyway, let's do the before start checklist uh, below the line. Before start checklist below the line. Air conditioning pack off. Anti-collision light. On. Parking brake. Now release. Transponder. Out off. Before start checklist complete. Thanks, Andy. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Excellent. My goodness, there, Tim. Uh, that's very generous. Ge ge uh, generous. Generous. Thinking about gin. <laughs> Get some gin with your generosity. Thank you. So he's giving us a long push, uh, facing south on Whiskey to make a right turn out of Delta. So they'll be taxing everyone over to Yankee. Uh, taxi, Echo, Yankee, holding point 17. Echo. Um, yeah, so to explain that situation uh, with regards to what Fonawa was just saying there, my ex pilot has been having a stuck mic. So you, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of stuttering. When I'm pushing my push to talk button, I never had this problem previously. It's not always detecting it, and when I let go, it seems to be holding it down for a few seconds as well, which is a bit of a pain. But if I look up here, the FPS you can see look goes up to 50. Down here, it's not so much difference in FPS, it's a bit of stuttering, and it's affecting X Pilot. Uh, anyway, we best get the engine started now. Starting engine number two. N2 
oil pressure and one. Let's get some fuel in. Spar valve bright uh, dim brighten off. this stage anyway. Oh, Psycho. Uh, that's two stables, so I can shove one. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Parking brake set. Head two. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Watch. Head two. Oh, pressure and and one. Moving around, so back of one, Tango Bravo, ready for taxi. I'm back of uh, one, Tango Bravo, both the Yankee, holding point on 917. Good. Taxi by a call, Yankee to uh, holding point, runway 117, back of one, Tango Bravo. I'm back of 372, go, ahead. Everyone loving the X-Pay, how it's looking at the moment. Thanks everyone helping out through the chat as well. So it's disconnected and bypass in has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. What was that again? What to you? What to you? Oh my, it's my, that's my uh, Norwegian exhausted. I don't, well, exhausted, I don't know any. <laughs> right, let's just make sure we see the bypass bit. Perfect. Let's tug bypass pin all seen. Let's do it before taxi flight. Uh, I should need engine wing anti ice on now. Here comes flight controls. Full forwards, full back, left. And right. Here comes the runner. Full right and full left. Recall can blank the lower DU. And all we need to do now is read the before taxi checklist, please, Andy. Before taxi checklist, please, Andy. <laughs> before taxi checklist. Thank you. Generators. On. APU is off. Start switch. Continuous. OP. On. Anti ice. On. Air conditioning. Pack sort of bleeds on. Isolation valve. Auto. Flap. Uh, flaps, we have five required, uh, five selected and uh, green light. Stab trim. 5.8 is required, 5.8 is set. Leaders. Are they Ted? <laughs> Flight control. Uh, checked. Recall. Checked. Before taxi checklist complete. Thank you, uh, Addy, before taxi checklist complete. We can request taxi. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, request taxi. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, taxi, right Delta, right Yankee, holding point to runway 17. Uh, right Delta, right Yankee, hold point one seven alpaca eight Delta Kilo. Perfect. So uh, we're gonna go right here on Delta and then right onto Yankee and then all the way to that point. Right, parking rate release, clear left, clear right, config. No takeoff config warning. We're on our way to Cologne. Very keen that Andy, I know he could, <laughs> he could get a little bit ahead of himself there. Excellent, I think someone else is giving away. Yes, the aircraft taking off. I can't believe I had live weather off. Looking much more like you would expect here. Uh, eight Delta Kilo, is that a Danish flight? Oh, I'm too busy looking at chat there. Uh, Delta Kilo, just for the last uh, two letters for the um, airport in Cologne. Echo Delta, Delta Kilo, and the eight. I don't know, it's just like that number today. <laughs> Just randomly aside. <laughs> uh, dome off. Very good, David Smith. Yes, it would be off now. Lima. Remember Alpha Bravo Alpha. There's going to be a ground delay of roughly half an hour due to a lot of unbound. Half an hour delay on the ground? We just got away and four. Uh, it's a bit downhill here, so when you're going downhill, you don't need any uh, thrust. Just let the gravity do its thing. But now uh, we can do the. Due to that, we can't really have traffic uh, in 
circuits. When ah, so I think he's requesting circuits. Yeah, probably not the best idea to have the circuits. Orbit in the air for half an hour. Hi Alfie, yeah, thanks for the 28 down. months as a member. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's two years, four months. Um, shutters could be... Uh, stutters could be that your CPU is throttling because it's having to work hard because X-Plane and adding X-Pilot trying to transmit causes stutters. Thank you so much Alfie for using your mumps, <laughs> your mumps uh, uh, comment. Uh, Tile 11901, now pack 8 Delta Kilo, bye. Bye bye. Perfect. Um, thanks for using your mumps uh, highlighted comment to hi you know try and help me there. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that's right because I think the CPU is working pretty hard and it's just affecting my ability to transmit on X-Pilot. Uh, but that's only started since I've started using it in hard skyscapes. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to keep an eye on it. Anyway, I'll do the before takeoff checklist, please, Andy. Before takeoff checklist to the line. Config. We've checked. Flat. Five five green lights. Stab trim. That is five point eight units set. Takeoff briefing. So takeoff briefing. Packs auto bleeds on. V speeds are set departure. We've got wet speeds. One two nine one three seven one four four set. We're going to be flying the Tuxil three Charlie, which is climbing straight ahead, runway heading towards Umput, climbing to an altitude of six thousand feet. NADP two. Any problems? We'll climb straight ahead twenty five miles, and um, we'll make sure we make a turn to the right over the sea. Uh, that's it. Any problems? We'll double check the weather for coming back here. We should be okay for Cat One ILS. That's it. That is reviewed. Cabin. Secure. Before takeoff checklist completed to the line. Oh, thank you, Andy. Excellent. We're all ready to go. We'll check in with Tower. He's gone via Alpha 2. Oh, might as well just go to the end. At Tower, very good evening. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo Taxing, Hall Point, uh, Alpha 1, Runway 17, ready for departure. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, Vessel Tower, hello again. Line up and wait, runway 17 by Alpha 1, expect shortly. Uh, via Alpha 1, line up and wait, runway 17, Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo. Perfect, so we've been cleared to line up and wait only, that's why uh, my operator, we turn the taxi light off as a reminder, we don't have our takeoff clearance. And we'll do now the flow below the lights, that's usually done by the first officer. strobes on as well. So, Andy, could I have the before takeoff checklist below the line? Before takeoff checklist below the line. Thanks. MCP. Set. Transponder. TARA. Strobe lights. On. Landing lights. They are to go. Before takeoff. That's my fault, Andy. I, I, cl I closed you off there, Andy. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, wait for our takeoff clearance. That looks very ominous out there, very dull. Does look amazing in the sim though. Terror looks going to be the need to park for taxi in Yankee. Rubbish lineup, completely overshot the sense line. It's too busy getting the X pilot up to we'll make sure it can transmit. Eight, two, there we go. Superb. Is that a plug-in reading the checklist? No, it's Andy. Andy's pre-recorded voices. <laughs> Andy, at least you didn't blame me this time, no. You, you think that the, the fix you did work quite nicely, but I accidentally pressed the close button before you'd actually finished speaking. Cool, so there must be a little bit of a gap for separation. You can see the aircraft has just departed, five miles ahead now. Good. Uh, Flyboy, have you flown to Bergen in real life? I haven't. Andy Epsom um, is a real person? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. There's Scandi. 3.2 in arrival, should that add a little bit of extra fuel we took. All looking good. Alpaca 8, 
Delta Kilo Winds, 15 degrees, 10 knots, runway 17, clear for takeoff. Runway 17, clear takeoff, Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo. Landing lights are on, check this complete. Tog is in chat, let's go to Cologne Bonn. There we are. 40% 10-1. Departing 737, good line up and wind, runway 175. Sounds up slightly for you, there we are. Stabilised, set takeoff thrust. Correction, scan Zeta needs to bubble. 90.6. There we are. Take off thrust sets. Indications normal. Life force pressure on the control column. Check. Release the forward pressure. V1. V1. And off the thrust lever. Rotate. Up we go. Two to two and a half degrees per second. And we're airborne. Gears coming up. And on to the fly directors. Four hundred. Out nav. Delta Kilo contact now. One to one decimal zero. So uh, one to one decimal uh one to one decimal zero. Okay, Delta Kilo. Thanks to the ATC bye. Just realised it wasn't transmitting again. Let's go jump my X part up here. Uh, I'll make a one six up Bravo on the Yankee. Uh, Command A, and we can bug up. I'll try to get a flat bus. Bravo, uh, the Echo contact the tower, the 119.1, the close and only. I'll turn him down a little bit. Lovely evening. Hello, two one four, the one, uh, Kira, and then the up. Class one. And flaps up. I think, uh, what's this radar called? It has a name. Uh, I think it's uh, Fleasland radar. Uh, Fleasland radar, good evening. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo on a Tuxil 3 Charlie, passing 2900 for altitude 6000 feet. Uh, climb flight level 170, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. I think you gave me a direct as well. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, confirm direct to Mexi. Uh, direct to Mexi, sorry, climbing flight level 170, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Perfect, so Mexi executed. Our nav's available. Come on, Zebo, you can do it. Turn for me. Come on, it's still doing this silly thing when you update and it doesn't work. Alright, VNAV, out at events. Sometimes you just have to double update these waypoints. This has been fixed. I'll do it again, it should work. It always works the um, second time, but it's a little bit broken. Alright, flaps up, no lights. Where is it going, Zebo? Where are you going, buddy? I'm still turning left here. It's not working. Why is it? Mm, it's bugged. Look, it's not liking that at all. I'm going to have to do this manually, heading select, and then we'll just update it one time. It just keeps going left. Uh, flaps up the lights. VNAV standard is now set. Passing six three five level one seven zero after takeoff checklist. So gears off. Brakes off. Six degrees. We're still in a bit of humidity here, so we'll leave the engine anti ice on. Air conditioning and pressurisation. Uh, diff pressure two point eight. Climbing. Set and we'll release the cabin crew. There we are. After takeoff, check this. Let's try that one more time. Mexi executes. L nav. Why are you turning left? Where are you going? Where are you going? Don't know why it's doing this, guys. I did the test sector earlier and even changed routes. Uh, check, you know, played around with LNAV and things like that, but it's not working. I mean, it's, it's heading in the general right direction, it's making a slight right turn now, so maybe it will stabilise and head towards it. Makes it. Keep a close eye on it. There we are. Oh, using active sky, yes, and then hard skyscapes, hence the very dramatic colours. There we are, on our way. Smoothed out on the FPS as well. There we are, okay, it seems to be working now. Let's keep a very, very much close eye on uh, LNAV here. 
Uh, Daniel, hello. Great question there. What should you do when you get a TKSRA warning at flight level 410 and you have to climb? You climb. Yes, it's the maximum certified altitude of this aircraft, but you climb in that situation. Um, you, you, the aircraft will do it. Uh, it, it. It's just the point at which it's certified at it, but um, you're not going to break anything. I don't think so, yeah, you obey with the TKS. Right, passing 105, flight level 170. Uh, let's do the pre cruise checks now. So, fuel, we have four pumps on. Uh, lights, we can turn off. We've got the engine anti ice still on, so that's fine. Uh, one to one decimal five five X, so much the ATC, I'll pack at eight uh, delta kilos along. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, lights are off. Maybe some pressurisation is all good. Uh, seat belts, leave on recall. There we are. Pre cruise checks complete. I had two thanks for the, your, your year as a member now. Has it been that long already? My goodness. I'm very happy to see that you successfully made it off the pavement on this trip without incurring any fights. Thank you very much into referencing our uh, Alpaca Logistics Euro Truck Simulator 2 stream over at Flight Deck to Sim Gaming a couple of days ago. Uh, yes, fine free. Generally we are when we're flying. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Right, let's check in with these guys. Uh, radar, very good evening. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Climb flight level 170 inbound Omexi. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, Polaris, hello, Sam, flight level 370. Climb flight level 370, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Scan the name of 210, identification service terminated, you'd come on to 2 decimal 8. There you go, 370 is set, and that's our cruise level. Look at that once. Set on the MCP, and also here three Monday times. Jets complete. Alpaca 370, clear light. Volume just about right. Cool, ETA then. Uh, 1831, so an hour and 30 minutes then. That has the full part of arrival here. Uh, Simply, your Alpaca 13 Charlie, by the way. Very cool. I think I heard you. Uh, Mickey Boo, can you advise how to enter a hold when opposite direction to the inbound course of the fix? Had this at Zurich and the autopilot threw a wobbly. Well, the beauty of the real aircraft and the Zippo, uh, the, well, uh, you just push L down. You don't have to worry about parallel, direct, or offset entries. It'll do it for you. The Zippo mod used to be quite good, but Zippo is in the process of transferring all the code over uh, from XLUA to C++, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. But um, in doing that, you're getting performance improvements, but there's a lot of Affects the code in different ways, so that's why it will never be a little bit wobbly at the moment. Hi, I'm Paris. Thank you so much for the 18 months as a member. Uh, streaming during a standby, what a way to jinx yourself. <laughs> Don't say anything, I oh, My phone is propped up, so I can't see anything here. Uh, but no, we're all good here. All good, thank you. Look at that, it looks really nice. That frosty brown, bit, bit exaggerated, but this sort of, when you're at night, this is what I really like about these effects. If you remember previously with X plane clouds and uh, the active sky plug clouds, they always were illuminated at night time, regardless of the fact there's no light. The fact this is exactly what it looks like, completely dark, you can't see any details, there's no. There's no sunlight or moonlight here, so that's much better. Much, much better. Uh, Hakun Rodriguez, does Active Sky Weather move in with the world, or is it like all the other weather engines that updates the weather so the clouds go away and spawn in again? Yeah, unfortunately, it's a limitation with Active Sky when it reloads the weather, it actually gets rid of all the clouds and then redraws them in the space of about two or three seconds. 
I think it's a small price to pay for the fact that you have live weather matching the meta. Um, and I, from what I understand, they're, they're looking into fixing that, uh, or have been for a while anyway. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. For, for me, it's a small price to pay to have actual live weather. Shout out to the king of the alpacas. Bye-bye. Was that something about alpacas? Uh, sorry, it was alpaca. You tell tequila. It's something about alpacas. Maybe it wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't get what the intent uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it was uh, something here. Yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, no worries. Oh, it's okay. I don't talk about alpacas. Right, I'll stay with this guy for now. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Look, we're out in the clouds. Look. Professional pilot here. Left the engine anti-ice on. Wasting all that fuel. Yeah, draw, the nights are really um, drawing in now. Look at this. Um, six o'clock in the evening, British summer time. Seven o'clock here in, in Norway, and it's dark already. Um, we're going to be streaming in different. I always try to stream live time where possible, but in the um, in the uh, winter months, I often knock my time back a few hours or twelve hours so we can enjoy uh, the scenery. Uh, Alfie, uh, seatbelt signs still on. My operator. Um, we keep the seatbelt signs on uh, throughout the entire flight now due to the pandemic. It doesn't mean you can't get out and use the facilities, you just have to ask the cabin crew. I think that might be changing soon though. Uh, Captain Nixon, when was the last time you did a GLS approach? Oh crikey. Uh, in real life, long time ago. Malaga was the last time I did one. Uh, not this year. Uh, and I, don't, I think I've done one once in a stream. Uh, Sick Burrito, what sort of FPS does Active Sky... Uh, what sort of FPS hit does Active Sky have? Very small Slick Burrito. <laughs> hello Reagan, it's a cheeky, cheeky shout out from uh, DLH, DLH26 Mike, good evening, hello to you. Uh, NXOA, how do you get the older 737 eyes? I see some of your instruments are older, like the Ball Horizon Indicator and Autopilot. It comes with the Zebo mod, you just select the option for the Honeywell MCP and the um, analog standby instruments. And we've got a little old school here today. I think I'm meant to be over on Unicom. That's what we're checking. Uh, that scope. Oh no, we should still have ATC. I think it was someone else. It was a nice little queue of traffic going to Cologne from uh, Bergen. It was pretty cool. Great to find on the Vatsim map. Uh, walking Dog, can ATC help you in the event that both airspeed is unreliable? Great question, Walking Dog. Now, airspeed unreliable, uh, airspeed unreliable is extremely nasty. Um, we have memory items for it, so if we find or we get an ASI disagree uh, alert come up on the PFD, but bear in mind that will only come up if you have a difference between the captain and first officer's um, airspeed indicator. We have memory items to, to uh, remember we have to apply basically uh, in that situation and those memory items mean we can't actually uh, maintain altitude because it's you have to set a, a fixed pitch and power setting so if that was to ever uh, happen first you've got to do is disconnect all the automation autopilot order throttle and turn the, the flight directors off because they'll be following guidance most likely off of uh, the speed you're doing which is now unreliable and you set a pitch and power setting based off your phase of flight so um, for uh, flaps up like we are now you set an attitude of four degrees thrust of 75 percent for the flaps extended you set an attitude of 10 degrees and 80 percent and depending where you are, what heights, what your present speed is, your configuration, the aircraft will do one or two things, and probably climb or descend. And this pitch and power setting, uh, and the flaps up case now, four degrees and 75%, it will ensure, regardless of your speed and height, that the aeroplane will still fly. Um, it's a very, you know, if you're lower down, it'll climb, if you're at a higher altitude, it'll descend, it'll eventually reach an equilibrium. And at that point, you know, we just simply set an attitude thrust setting, and we'd advise ATC, minimum of a pan call, you know, 
Uh, we sold like Pan Pan, Pan Pan, Pan Pan Alpaca, 8 Delta Kilo, we have an airspeed and reliable, and we'd actually request a block altitude. We'd like to request between flight level 300 and 200, maintain heading, stand by. Let ATC get rid of everyone around you. You've got to fly this airplane safely, which means until you've established a reliable airspeed source, or you, you, you've you used pitch and power settings from the table in the QRH, you, you have to change your altitude but yeah airspeed and arrival is, is stressed throughout the tight rating we look at it uh, frequently during recurrency sim training at least every two or three years um, and it's one that um, is very important to understand and I've always stressed this when I was an instructor when I was an SFI the sim and it doesn't matter what aircraft you're flying there's only one thing that matters in an airplane if you want to fly in a straight line uh, and that's pitch and power. You set the altitude, you set the thrust, set the target altitude, target thrust setting, you'll get the speed that's quoted in the manual based off your gross weight. Uh, with, with remarkable accuracy, usually in four or five knots. Um, so yeah, very, very good. Uh, Danny Rabal, what are memory items? I can imagine a bit when it's related to, but not exactly. In short, it's a list of things you have to remember duh, <laughs> when you have a failure. That's correct. So we have... Um, on the QRH, something called a QAI, which stands for Quick Action Index. And essentially, not all of them, but the vast majority of everything on there are have what we call memory items. So if something happens, we have to, by memory, apply procedure, usually when it's time critical. So we don't actually have time to get the QRH out and go, right, what's the checklist here? And we have to know them by memory. So things like airspeed unreliable, uh, engine fires, engine severe damage, um, Loss of thrust on both engines, rapid depressurization. You know, if there's a big hole inside the plane, we can't get the checklist out. We've got to action it straight away. The rapid depressurization is probably the one with the, the most to do there. Um, you know, config warnings as well. So there's quite a, a few things to do. Uh, BX7 iOS, what is the MEL? That is the minimum equipment list. So basically, that allows you to dispatch um, with uh, items on the aircraft uh, unserviceable. Um, so, for example, um, a fuel pump, if one of the fuel pumps isn't working, we can dispatch so long as we've consulted the MEL, applied if required any maintenance action, and if required we have to apply operational action as well. Um, so yeah, uh, auto throttle uh, inoperative, that's quite a common one. APU inoperative, uh, one of the autopilots inoperative. Um, the MEL is, is, is um, up to the point at which you commence taxiing with, under your own power, the MEL is um, limiting. So if you've actually started moving under your own power's taxi, you don't actually technically need to consult the MEL. You, you look at the QRH and then decide. A bit of common sense would dictate, look, let's say the weather radar failed at the whole points. Let's say I'm flying from, I don't know, Heathrow to Paris, and it's completely cav okay the weather at the destination is clear you know would i take off probably yeah because i don't need the weather radar however if i'm taking off in this thunderstorm forecast on route and destination i'm going to go back on stand to get the weather radar fixed so a bit of bit of uh, a bit of common sense a bit of uh, decision making required so, yeah that's that's essentially go back what the mbl is there we go uh, ben, Ben, Beatrix, look up the Air France Flight 447, yeah. Uh, and A330, that comes between South America and Europe because of ice build-up, pitot tubes, famous and tragic accident. Yes, uh, SP and Reliable, I mean, there's many other factors with that one, but I think essentially the ice don't have a There's a more famous, well, I say famous as well, well-known airspeed indicator event that happened. It was a 757 departing somewhere in South America. They had a... a a wasp's nest in, or a wasp was jammed up the, the pitot tube, and uh, the crew misdiagnosed that as airspeed and rival, and then he crashed. It, it is disturbing, of course, Ben Ben, as well. Well, very good of you to, to tell people to warn you about that, but these, these accidents incidents are, uh, as tragic as they are, they're, they're important learning uh, points for, for aviation. One of the reasons we're so safe is that they are studied. Uh, and understood what Polaris, went wrong and then applied evening. to train. I'll pack the 16 Delta Bravo with you passing flight level Bravo. 133 for 170. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a Chef Sheff Sheffield accent that does. Uh, uh, simply yeah, pop your Alpaca 13 Charlie, we know. <laughs> Mentioned it 10 times. I've got a funny feeling I'll be to be on Udicon. Uh, 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 u
but I'm looking on the Vatsim map and it still says we're in the Sunny Eyes area. Area Hello, Vixion. Uh, BX7 iOS, have you flown with water friendly or not? Yes, I have. Not that long ago either, about uh, three or four weeks ago. No, in Oh, Vixion, hello, got to go. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bravo, exactly. Three, five, zero, and just repeat the web by the get please. So what to go? Thousand to go. Direct to Lindsay, flight level 350, Alpaca 16 Delta Bravo. Thank you very much. Perfect. You get the 901, Domino Mason, the FIR boundary is about 80 bars in front of you. Thank you. We're ready to fill up 120 and the cross CR and the Yankee. There we are, on our way, there's our destination. Uh, Essen, that's close to Cologne. Oh, gosh, this map's not the clearest one. There is Cologne. I think it's pronounced Cologne in German, but they say Cologne. That's where we're going, Cologne Bonn. Quite a large airport. Uh, big base for DHL, I think. One of the, the cargo operators there. There we are, we've made it though. Captain X-Ray, if Captain FO's PFD shows different airspeeds and altimeters, which one to follow? Great question. Again, uh, for the airspeed one, we'd apply the airspeed unreliable memory items, and this checklist, again, just ensures that the airplane is flying safely first, and then we would um, set a pitch and power setting, and then we could, with that, determine which airspeed is reliable so basically we have a table which we can reference which says right if you set this pitch set this power um, you should get uh, this speed and if we look at the airspeed indicator saying right well that one's correct but this one is 50 knots out we know which one's unreliable so um, yeah a bit of, uh, bit of uh, experimental really. this, uh, it's cold cool cold I can't pronounce that C colon oh my goodness me <laughs> <laughs> Leipzig's the main DHL base, but they uh, it's their main base, but there's a big cargo operator that goes into Cologne, or it is a very large um, uh, cargo airport. Uh, Chris, do you have to set any courses for the cruise? No, not, not these days. The only time we set the course is to manage the runway uh, final approach track. We, we've, we've never navigated now using VORs and local. You can use it to track it bound on the radials and things. All I know is that Cologne spells very nice, very good. Uh, Harry, have you ever had any failures when flying in real life? Yes, I think touch wood, uh, serious, but uh, minor technical faults, but very rare. I'd say one every two and a half years, and when I say small faults, I think like the order frontal won't engage or one of the order pilots. Um, you know, there's a lot of redundancy in this aircraft, but nothing can Simon C, yes, Cologne there is UPS, FedEx, DHL, they are all there, yes. Cologne is pronounced Old Spice. Outrageous. Anyway, we'll be crossing or coasting along the west coast of Denmark here. And then our, our routing takes us pretty much towards Bremen, and then it's actually a left, sort of, you know, small southwestly, not a direct line here. Lovely tailwind, though, look at that. 560 knots ground speed. Super. Do what you're saying is, uh, you're achieved for another failure, maybe, Icefire. Lovely wheel, Edward. No, uh, I agree, I agree with you. I'll have a look outside, but I don't even see much. There we are. Good evening, 
Very cool. Uh, King Pfizer, CGT purely uh, just know if an engine is operating correctly, do you expect a particular temperature? Thank you very much, Keith. Um, so we're only really sort of monitoring EGT primarily during the engine start, so make sure it doesn't exceed um, a set limit or have a hot start and then it stabilizes around 400 degrees. Um, in these phases of flight, we're not monitoring or really checking EGT. Uh, if they exceed the limit, they, they highlight and it comes up for you. Um, 770. Policy sat in this aircraft for 10 years. <laughs> I'd say it's around that. Uh, maybe a little cooler, but uh, but N1 is the primary reference. Just our, our thrust setting there. But yeah, primary. As you said, it's it's to to sort of highlight any peculiarities in temperature we would probably notice. Uh, especially in the difference between the two, they're they're usually very close to each other. Uh, Gabriel Strauss, it's a big UPS hub. Very interesting. Uh, John Panfield, I'm back. Small food related keyboard emergency. <laughs> no, not chili con carne from a couple of nights ago, is it? <laughs> Stored for this night because it's zero. nice and smooth. <laughs> uh, Captain XO, can you pronounce Jakarta like the native does? One, two, two, eight. Alpaca yeah. uh, two, two, decimal eight. Alpaca eight, down to kilo so long. Perfect. There we are. Over to Unicom. Lawrence straight for UK to Canary Island sector with an FO. You have nothing common with. <laughs> what do you do to pass the time? <laughs> Thankfully, that's not an issue because it's very unusual to not have something in common with your colleague. Uh, yeah, you talk about most of the time we talk about 30, work, what's going to happen, 40, with COVID, 30, um, 20, last hours, 10. preoccupied with the approach briefing. So yeah, the, the first 40 minutes getting airborne. So now on my way from London, Derry. Hope you're good carrots. Good carrots, Jonas, let's play. I'm not sure what that was all about. Thank you very much for the two euros. That's very kind. Uh, London Derry, Northern Ireland. Uh, we should call it Derry, though, really. Uh, I think that's a bit of a, a political hotspot, that there, isn't it? But uh, I wish you a safe flight. It might be in the sim or even in real life. I'm not sure, but uh, good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much for your continued support as well, Jonas, let's play. Appreciate it. You have flying in common, at least. That is true. But yes... Uh, um, we do what we can. Asked you streaming at the same time as V1 as you always do. Oh, I had no idea it was streaming. I do genuinely take a conscious effort. I always look out for V1 at 3.20 Sim Pilot if they're sort of streaming here. But it was a last minute stream. I am actually subscribed, but I didn't realise he was actually streaming right now. No, if you haven't heard of V1 simulations, go check him out. Airbus, uh, Airbus pilot doing exactly the same as, as I am. Uh, I just try and stream whenever I get free time. And I was on standby so far, why not? Hello, gaming moose. Hope you're doing well. Uh, flight sim to toughest system to learn in the 737. All of it. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got, uh, the technical aspects of this aircraft, so you've got to keep on top off if you don't look at it for a while. Um, you can fall a little bit behind. I'd say fall a bit behind. All it takes is to review the chapter, and, and you'll be up to speed again. So for, I hate electrics, like anything to do with the electrical systems. Not a fan of. Um, the rest, it, it, it's not too difficult. It's just, you know, we're not engineers. We just have to know when we flick a switch, what's it doing, uh, and how some of the backup systems working as well. 
If he wants to find Concord tonight, well, very good. We must jump in Concord again soon. Uh, Matt Warren, how uh, how well does the plane account for drift when in the cruise in Microsoft Flight 2020 through 20 seems to look a bit wonky trying to fight against it, lol. Um, so yeah, the real aircraft has no problem dealing with, with whatever the uh, crosswind component is, let's say. Uh, from the prevailing winds, as the Zebo mod well, is pretty much on the tail here, so it's not an issue. But um, no, it should be not making many adjustments at all. It should be quite smooth. Uh, Bay, uh, Bo, I think they're saying, are you on a regular schedule again in real life? Yeah, I'm on a full roster as normal. Uh, I've been very busy. Uh, 90 hours the last 28 days. Uh, I've got um, I've got another standby tomorrow. And then that's it for a few days. Well, and then next week I'm flying three days. And I'm looking very busy at the beginning of November again, actually. Whereas this time last year it was getting very quiet. Uh, Funawa A, your thoughts on X-Plane 12? Now, all I've seen is a little preview video. Um, I think it was played at the uh, Flight Sim Expo, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's giving... What a lot of people want to see, which is improved textures, I think it's improved clouds and things like that. I think the core of the sim won't be much different to X-Plane 11, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, because the actual X-Plane 11 sim is pretty good uh, from a handling perspective, uh, which is why I use it still primarily. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, of course we'll be getting it and trying it uh, once we, we get that opportunity over here. Hello Dennis, just dropping uh, in to say hi, hello to you. And hello to Hate J. Robbins as well. Uh, Michael, we have to stop flying in the winter as before. Now, we were initially told it'd be much quieter, not like the last winter where we, yeah, I didn't do a touch an aeroplane for four months. Um, this time round, um, I'll be flying throughout the entire winter period. Um, we are having some time off unpaid leave, uh, unpaid leave off each uh, month, which is in agreement with, with the COVID pandemic and the union, uh, which is, you know, I understand uh, why we're having to do that, but um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm just happy. I don't want to have it where I have that period of time out of an aeroplane for such a long period like we had last year. Um, so even if it means one flight a week, that's that's, that's better than nothing. Captain X, good evening from UTC plus seven. It's uh, 24 minutes past midnight, Jakarta. Very good morning to you, I should say then. Uh, George Miller, do you think we'll get all supersonic airlines within your lifetime? I don't think airlines we will. Uh, we've got that biz jet boom thing going on, haven't we? Yep, we'll probably get some some small business jet sized aircraft going supersonic, but no, I don't think we're going to have a commercial airliner. There's too much pressure on, on uh, carbon emissions and things like that now to, sorry, for an aircraft like that to be developed. It'll be electric, that's what will be the next thing. But I reckon in the next 15, 20 years, you're going to see viable, I'm not talking 737 size electrical aircraft, but viable sort of commuter size, you know, 20, 30 seat aircraft uh, flying with electric engines. I, I think that's, I really do think that's around the corner. There's a, a few companies that have made some, or have some interesting concepts uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we'll be uh, going on holiday on an electric aircraft anytime soon. Thank you, 14 months, Jonas Les Plays, as a member. Thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, he goes, nah, it's in the sim. Let's see how fast I'm in Cologne today, since you talked about it last time. Could we get a stream with a broadsword call sign? We did talk about that right recently. Yes, let's, I tell you what, because uh, Just Flight have very kindly sent me their Palma de Mallorca scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. How about, I've been thinking, I'm going to stream it maybe on Friday. Um, because they gave me the scenery, I'll purchase it as a giveaway for someone. Um, I was thinking of taking the C... is it CJ4? The, the the modded business jet? I haven't flown that for a while. And we could perhaps use Broadsword for that. Uh, cool sight there. But uh, I haven't decided to do that or take a PA28. Um, you know, do some circuits around Parma. But uh, now we can probably take the, the Learjet. So, yes, that'll be coming on Friday. We're going to have a, a 
on standby tomorrow, I've got a lot of other things I need to get done uh, tomorrow, but uh, Friday I'll probably do that. Maverick, have you ever in inadvertently called out butter in real life after a small landing? Never inadvertently done it, do it all the time. <laughs> Uh, T-Bomb 83, and our Sky Escapes has been framed friendly on my machine. It has on mine. I'm just getting a little bit of a, uh, you know, a stutter, which is unnoticeable. You can't really see it, but it is affecting the ability to run things in the background. So, as I was mentioning earlier, X-Pilot is getting a little bit, uh, you know, push the push to talk button on my joystick, and the PC's not picking that up. <laughs> List of an evening played people, hope all is well. Good day to you, sir. Oliver Smith, when is your next stream? Probably Friday. Pretty sure I'll do on Friday. Uh, uh, and what is your ETE or time on route, you'd like to know? Well, our ETA uh, it's going to be 18.30, so it's about another hour until we touch down. Uh, Thomas, is your beam points function? When doing a direct, still bugged in the Zebo version. Well, well, I can't really do in a beam because we're in a straight line. Well, I can. Let's have a look. We bring Asplus to the top. A beam. Yeah, not looking good. Yeah, we should have all the beam come zero one here, but we're not getting that. Not sure. I'll try again. Maybe if we get a bit more of a direct later. If we get a direct later, I'll try it. I've had a weird horizontal line running through my cockpit as a result of the sky escapes demo. I haven't decided to buy it yet. Yeah, sometimes I think with the when you're moving as well, if you're moving sideways, you get this sort of oh, how would I describe it? It's a bit it's not pixelated, but it's sort of smeary. <laughs> That's my best way of explaining it. Uh, but I think it's a small price to play. Uh, John Padfield, Nine Bubs is a member. Get that's gone very quickly as well. Be putting up for me for Nine Bubs. We have John. <laughs> Thank you so much anyway for your continuous support on both here and the Flight Dead Sim Game Channel. Always there, thank you. Uh, Thomas, if for me, if I execute the yeah, direct, I'll have goes crazy. Yeah, we had some issues on departure there. Um, we bought the waypoint we cleared direct to, and it didn't want to go directly to it straight away. It did eventually sort itself out. Now, along the west coast of Denmark. Some event started half an hour ago, so we should be in the thick of it by the time we get towards Cologne. Alex, ah, yes, Smeary, my favourite type of graphical glitch. Brilliant. Yeah, you're right, Lauren. Uh, directs right now, overall, just a bit buggy. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Zebo's working way hard to get that fixed. Uh, deadly coronavirus, you're always here. Uh, can you change the 737 DAV display from showing track to heading? Yes, that is an option in the Zebo mod. Yeah, and with the real NG, you can have a heading up display, but track up display is so much more useful. Um, and that's why I think it's the way most 737s are, are laid out. You have the option to select that in the, um, the options. Uh, T Bomb 83, how accurate is the Zebo to the real aircraft? There are a few little bugs at the moment with the latest version as Zebo converts the code over. Uh, but it's. Um, my preferred 737 in a desktop simulator. It's pretty close, especially from the handling perspective and the pitch power settings, which is what it's all about, as we were discussing about 15, 20 minutes ago. MGS1, member for six months, just want to express my respect and gratitude for a wonderful community and first experience in Vatsim together. Thank you very much, MGS1, and I see you're booked in for our members' group flight as well, so I hope you'll uh, enjoy that too. Thank you very much for your six months as a member. Oliver Smith, I'm from the States. Uh, I'll tell you if you're good, but can you try your best ability on an American accent? No. <laughs> no way, Jose. I think I might have done it once before. I think V1 Sims did a, an impression of my accent, and I did do one in response there. Did, I went, darn tootin'. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's my American accent for you. <laughs> Me and Char, hefty tailwind. Let's change the topic quickly. Yes, 88 knots. 530 knots ground speed, it's very good. 275 miles to go. What are we landing in um, 
in Cologne. I think 3-2 right, that's what we've planned for. <laughs> Thanks on the spit. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're landing Cologne, runway 32 right. 38 arrivals inbound to Cologne. All sorts going in there. Uh, Team Bomb Are you Scottish? No. Purple. Purple. <laughs> there you go. Are you Scottish? <laughs> Not bad, I suppose. Uh, Angel Aviation, maybe point one three is fixed. Yeah, I don't have issues. Or are you flying in point one three? Uh, point one three is just a small fix to change the track magnetic heading. Um, now, when you roll past uh, three five nine, turning right, it goes to zero zero zero. Previously, it said three six zero, which was incorrect. Where are we going with this stream? Oh no! And the Jules Bank with you. What's our ETA for double descent? Uh, we're going to probably shorten that because I'm going to modify the arrival slightly. Uh, so 1805, it's saying at the moment. It's probably going to be more like 1800. So I'd say 25, 30 minutes from now. And Zebo point one four is out. Are you joking, plainly? <laughs> Zebo, uh, Zebo said he watched the stream anyway. And notice anything uh, that was out there, so he'd be fixing that. I had a chat with him this morning. Can't type. There we are, Cologne. Very German. All German arrivals like this these days. Three two rights. And here's the airport code. Um, I was looking here. You can actually land on this runway. It's long enough, 1800 meters. <coughs> but uh, the main runway is not taking proper use. Three two right. We're expecting today. Just grab ourselves a parking stands chart. We're going to aim to park up here uh, where the terminal is. The rest of the airport here. That's the terminal for the passengers. All this is the cargo apron. And over here is a military airport. Part of the military airport here as well. Uh, Listerman, how is the Cologne scenery in relation to the 301 by Cedric Gauch? We're using the 301 uh, Listerman by Cedric. I thought it changed. I thought the uh, name of the developer was someone else. It's was on the link I selected. Uh, Matt Warren, who's just bought an official UD6 zip hoodie. Uh, thank you so much, Matt. Unfortunately, I cannot see the comment because it's too small and it doesn't read it out. Thank you very much, Matt. That's very kind of you. And uh, can't wait to see a picture of you in the hoodie, man. That's uh, amazing. Thanks so much, man. Superb. Yeah, Aggie Listerman. I think that's what it said on the link, Aggie. But it is that one. I'm pretty sure it's that one by Cedric. The jewels four, one four right three two left is closed currently due to construction. Ah, very good. We'll be definitely three two right then. The jewels should park at the D gates if possible. <laughs> best uh, best spots of the house. Where's the D gates? Don't even know where that is. I'll just I'll just go. Oh yeah, sorry. The uh, the D gates are the ones outside the town. We'll just request taxi terminal two. Hello, Smith. Sorry, I forgot to tag you, but can you see my comment a few minutes ago? Let me have a look at that. <coughs> I found it. Honestly, you're lucky to live in the UK. I live in LA, and honestly, as far as plane spotting is strict, of course, because of 9/11. Yeah, uh, but also we have a lot of people that you know are a little off. Well, of course, Oliver, but. Um, you know, uh, it's it's um, it's it's very safe now, and, and things are in place to prevent things like that from happening. 
but uh, no, there's a lot of plane spotting in the UK and Europe, and I'm sure there is in America as well. Uh, Christian, what is the Airbus button control wheel steering now and again, and when do you use it in the 737? Never used it, Christian, in the real aircraft. I've never used control wheel steering in the last 10 years. Uh, it's sort of a, uh, yeah, exactly as you said. That's the aircraft I maintain an attitude or a roll rate. Um, one situation we advise to use it is in severe turbulence, which again I don't think I've ever properly experienced. So, so yeah, very much seldom used. Good evening to you, Warrior Labs. And. Bit of connect. Anyone else having issues using the Zebo download link? I'm getting a you need access message. Hard drive crashed. So, having to re download everything. Oof, that's dear. That's a. That's a Okay. Um, you can right click and copy it. Uh, I think that's the best way of getting it uh, downloaded. Uh, T bomb eighty three. What can you please school me? What the difference between UK ATC services are always confusing to me. Ah, oh, I mean, I always fly in radar controlled airspace, Class A airspace in the UK. But outside of controlled airspace, let me remember: basic traffic deconfliction procedural. Um, now, if we end up in the UK in uncontrolled airspace, which you might do some certain destinations, we have to always ask for the highest level of service outside of controlled airspace, so that would be a, a deconfliction service, um, but we you know, 99.9% .9 of the time we're in radar control service, the UK is obviously unique to that, and outside of the UK they have um, what is it called outside of controlled airspace, I can't remember but uh, no, wouldn't know Antti, what is it? Twilight or uh, dusk joint? The sun set uh, about an hour ago. So you can just about see enough, uh, enough light. There. It's all there. <laughs> it's all on guard. That's where you go on guard, or someone goes on guard. Nice and early, so we're not rushing today. So 208 nautical miles, because I did have a few issues with VNAV on this approach on the test sector, and I'm flying the same version here. But I have already let Zebo know. Uh, so hand over control to Andy or Jim or whoever it is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's grab the operational flight plan. I should quickly do a fuel check. So we've just passed Gikog. Look, let's, uh, let's see how we're progressing uh, along this sector. There we are, so Gikog uh, should be there 45 minutes into the flight, let's have a look at the time, 47, that makes sense, we passed it about a couple of minutes ago I'd say. Uh, at Gikog we would have had 3.5 tonnes, we took an extra 1200, so we should have about 4.7, we've got 4.7 exactly, and Gikog we should have burned 2.7 tonnes, engine used, we burned 2.8, that makes sense, we passed Gikog a couple of minutes ago, perfect, so it feels exactly as it should be. And now let's put in the forecast winds and information here. So, descent forecast page 250 below 100. That's executed. Forecast winds in 310, 200, and 100. But 004 at 77. So that uh, wind continuing to push us nicely north. Uh, 200, 006 at 56. And 100, we have 011 at 32. Let's fetch the weather for Cologne. Data link. And let's go to requests. Weather request. Echo. Delta, Delta, Kilo, N2, you've also brought out back airways, so thank you so much, I can't even read the comment though, it's so annoying when people purchase merch and I can't read the comment, but thank you so much, N2 as well, uh, for buying the dark grey uh, pullover hoodie, very, very kind of you sir, and the alpaca, uh, the alpaca airways wanted that as well, appreciate it buddy, I hope you went on the group flight. Here we are, Cologne, variable 3 knots, 10k, few at 3000, 10 degrees, QH is 1026. A marvellous evening in Cologne. There we are, 
1026 we can set here. As we have the weather, we can preset the Q and H there as well. Perfect. So runway three two right. We can select that. Go to the fix page. We'll put our infamous f uh, fix rings in. Ten four miles. Last point. To select gear down. Fat fifteen. And we're at 37 feet there. So it's going to be slash one one one. That's roughly where top of descent should be. Now. Let's have a look at this arrival. Now, I had a little issue with this arrival here earlier when I was modifying it to sort of allow for a shortened approach. So, here's the arrival we're expecting. It's the Copag 1 November. It's an RNAV transition. So, our, our route terminates at Copag and then it goes direct to Dita, Dita, my goodness, Delta Kilo 687. So, let's locate that here on the ND. There is Copac, and you can see there is our Delta Kilo 687. So you can see at the moment it wants us at 21,300 feet. Okay, fair enough. That's the entire arrival we need to fly to get all the way around here. However, we always plan for worst case and perhaps a potentially shortened approach. So what I'm going to do here is go to 685, and you guys have been watching the channel for a while. Most of you have. I'm going to put 685 to... Um, Rarix and see what the height is. Okay. Now, when I did this earlier, the Zebra Mod went a bit wonky. So I went Delta Kilo 685 to Rarix. Okay, it's still doing it. So you see how I planned for this arrival 685 and then a shortcut direct to Rarix. It's saying, right, I need you to be at 9,300 feet. That is complete codswallop. That is way too high. It should be something like 4,500 feet. And you can see, look, from 685 to Rarix, it's saying 26 nautical miles. That is not the case. You can see, look, it's about 4 nautical miles. So that is completely incorrect. I don't know what's happened to the Zebra mod with this respect. It used to be perfect. It used to be able to modify the routing uh, and it'd be fine. But uh, no, it's saying 685, 26 miles to Rarix. That's not the case. So that 93 and then to make me at 9,300 feet here and then get straight in, not going to happen. So it's a, it's a bug that's that's clear, cleared up. It used to work perfectly. So instead of that, I'm just going to sort of use what I'd expect. So, you know, I'd expect to be on base leg here at around uh, 4,000 feet. Okay, so instead of using the pre-estimated height of 93, previously, look, it was 194. I'm just going to stick in 4,500 because that's where I should be roughly uh, at that point there. Just from yeah, base leg turning there. Don't want to be much higher than that. So I'm going to put 4,500, bring the speed back to 220 knots or below, and that'll put us in a decent enough position uh, to intercept. Uh, you know, a shortcut to a 10 mile final. So I'm not sure what's caused that. Never seen that happen before. It worked perfectly in all previous versions. Anyway, if we don't get that shortcut, we're going to go 685. It has RNAV points for each one. What the mod's done is just created the one at the end there, Delta Kilo 680. But these are in the database, so you can type them in manually and put them in. But from 680, it's going to be a left turn 90 degrees to Delta Kilo 650, which is in the box. And then all the way towards uh, Rarix, uh, 3,000 feet. So remember, we've modified it by putting 4,500 here to allow for a, a bit more of a direct straight in approach uh, for that. So yeah, you need RNAV to fly this. Um, you won't be able to do this in the classics, the 200 or the, uh, the 747 uh, or 737 classics. Uh, but that's all looking good for our RNAV arrival, at least what we're expecting. On to the ILS then. Uh, ILS 32 right. There's two transitions. There's the Kola transition, which is not what we're flying. We're doing the one via Rarix, which is here. And we'll just get the frequency set. So that's going to be triple 1.1. Which is already active for my test sector. Uh, inbound courses, we'll actually put Cologne on standby. Look, 11215. 11215. Uh, inbound course is 316. 316. 316 is set. Uh, the minimums 502 feet, which is 200 feet AGL, so we'll go 502 for a cat C. Yeah, 502 is set. Zebo's just making 
going to right turn to my deco. Look at that tailwinds. Absolutely superb. Um, MSA, highest of a north, or sorry, to the southwest, 3,800. Um, routing in then via Rarix onto the ILS. The Rarix is the final approach fix at 3,000 feet. There it is, Rarix, 3,000 feet. We can leave that hard. Uh, we then go down the ILS, 3 degrees, checks in the FMC at 4.4 DME. We need to be at 1660. That is coded in the FMS. And then it's continuing towards the runway as well. Minimums we set 502. RVR required, 550 meters with all the approach lines available. We have to go around. I'll push Toga, called go around flat 15, set it go around for us. To pause the radar climb, gear up 400 feet, so we can engage LNAV. We're going to climb straight ahead to 5,000 feet. We're passing 3.2 miles off Kilo Bravo Oscar, which is the clone VOR on standby. Uh, we have 2,000 feet there, or 2,000 feet, whichever is later. It's probably going to be the, the, the uh, 3.2. We'll very quickly get to 2,000 feet, so we'll probably use heading select because we don't actually have that coded. 3.2 DME, uh, right turn uh, to the uh, Cola VOR, uh, 108 decimal 8, and then so 5,000 feet, 3.2 we can quickly dial up Cola, once you're already there, we can just redirect to it and then uh, uh, go from there. That's it, we've done everything there, runway then, 3-2 right, uh, landing distance available, we need the aerodrome chart for that. Where are you, there we are. So 3-2 right, landing distance available from the glide slope, 3,400 metres, huge runway, ideally for minimum runway occupancy to help them out, don't vacate on a runway uh, unless it's specifically instructed to, you always go for the high speeds, we have Alpha 3 or Alpha 4, ideally Alpha 4 would be best for us to keep the speed up and get towards the terminal, but ATC won't appreciate that, we'll aim to vacate at Alpha 3, uh, so that distance there, it's about half the length of that runway, so let's say it's around whatever it was, 3 8, let's call it 4, 15, 16, 1700, oh no, 1900, sorry, about, about 1900 meters for Alpha 3, let's have a look at performance, I'll look at chat very shortly guys, so Cologne, 3 2 right, it's dry, surface wind was variable at 3 knots, so, in the real OPT you can put minus 3, but on here I think if you just put the reciprocal, uh, that's fine. So if I put um, 1, 4, uh, 0 at 3, that should give us uh, the equivalent uh, tailwind. So 1, 4, 0 at 3, because it's variable at 3 knots, 3 knot tailwind. Uh, temperature, what was the temperature? See, let me just get the beds around. It's the easiest way of checking. 11 degrees. And a QNH 1026. There we go. Uh, landing weight then. It's uh, going to burn another, what's that, 900 kilos. Landing with 3.4. Let's get to Frankfurt Harbor. We need 2 tons, so that's at least 30 minutes. 900 kilos off this is going to be 59.2 for our landing weight. That's entered, flat 30. Let's see what the OPT says. It says flat 30, you want to break 2, about 2,200. I want to break 3, 17, 36. That's a little bit too soon. Uh, let's go 2, and I can always break manually. I'm going to go want to break 2, and then if I can make after 3, I'll start breaking manually. Uh, go from there. Should be fine. And we'll use uh, idle reverse. It's the last flat of the day. There we are, flat 30, want to break 2, idle reverse. Vacating either alpha 3 or alpha 4. Taxi, either Echo or Alpha, probably Alpha, onto the terminal area here. Do you have more detailed uh, charts for that? There we go. All briefed. I'll take back control, Andy. Thank you. And uh, we can complete the descent checklist. Look at that for timing. Absolutely perfect. We've done all the briefings and we're approaching German airspace. I'll just check in with, I guess, Ronigan Centre, not sure. Uh, radar, good arm down back at 8 Delta Kilo, maintaining flight level 370 inbound, November India Echo. Station calling in call sign. Uh, 
Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, Langreda Low, identify flight number 370. And ready descent to reach flight number 240 at Porter. Uh, when ready, descent flight level 240 to be level at. Uh, just confirm uh, the point, please. Uh, Porter. Papa, Oscar, Delta, Echo, Romeo. Uh, to be level at uh, Poda, Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, thank you. Perfect, so, Poda. What was the, res what was the restriction again, guys? <laughs> That's why there's two of us. So we got a uh, restriction to descend to be... I think it was 200, but we need to confirm with him. I'll let you know, I'll let you in chat. Confirm. 240, thanks, thanks. You could use the A on the B emoji if you wish. Actually, you can see here, before I put that in, 242 is exactly where Venus put us anyway. But that restriction just ensures that we'll apply it there. And that was when ready, so we could just preset 240. There we are. 240 preset, and the aircraft, we could just leave it. It'll automatically initiate descent at that point. There. That's why you guys, we have Andy, we have Jim, but you guys in chat are the extra first officer, the ears and eyes of what would be a real first officer next to me in reality to confirm these things. Okay, uh, go ahead. Delta Kilo, distance range flight number 200 at Poda. Okay, restriction send flight level 200 at uh, Poda, I'll back 8 Delta Kilo. I believe, you, I believe it was 240, but he's probably Doing changed it. Unless he's watching the stream and heard it. 200 set. And 200, we can preset the MCP as well. Always confirm with ATC though. I hope, I'm, I'm guessing he did say 240. Uh, I, I, I doubt everyone in chat is wrong. <laughs> Don't forget about Vlad, absolutely not that worried. Um, we've got to read the descent checklist. Andy, can I have a descent checklist, please? Descent checklist. Pressurisation. Uh, land out 300 set. Oh, why is that stopped? Anti-ice. Is off. Approach briefing and fuel. We have discussed. IAS and alt bugs. 141.502 and we preset the QNH1026. Descent checklist complete. Thank you, Andy. As professional as ever. Unless it was all a prank. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was 240. And then uh, he probably modified it. Anyway, down we go. Top of the sensor chat. Looks like we've initiated our descent to make that restriction 200 at Poda, which I've never even heard of. There we are. Into Cologne we go. So VNAV is fine at these phases, it's just like on approaches, the information of it is a little bit off. That would be 500 miles from touchdown sufficient for you. Vnav's doing a good job here, holding the speed quite nicely, but in fact it's taking into account this, this strong tailwind as well to make that uh, 200 or below by Poda. There we are, look, off the chart. And we have a little level segment here, so yeah, Vnav's doing a good job at this uh, stage. A double dick hit, down we go, love that figure of speech, yeah, it's not great. I've never been a fan of night modes. Clarion H2 Papa, report mark number. And Mike Decimal 7 8. Going 3 1, report mark number. 
bank angle 25 degrees. So, target speed is now 284 knots on conversion. So keep an eye on that, just make sure it doesn't go too fast. We can always use speed brake to bring the target speed back. We're not under any speed restriction at the moment. The jewels for me, it's always nice to sit in the garden in the evening and watch all the beautiful EPS planes like the 748 MD11 coming into Cologne today. I'll monitor the virtual sky, it's very good. Now this been, I've been using night mode on the real tablet for Navigraph and never changed it back. Exactly the same problem I have at night with our EFBs. Uh, the night mode, it, yeah, you know, it, it's much better because it's a bright white light in your face. Otherwise, when you're on approach, it's a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, I prefer not to have it that way. Anyway, if you've just joined in, welcome. We've just started our initial descent into Cologne. It's been a smooth sailing so far. We're with Langen Radar in Germany, and sending flight level 200 to be level by Poda, expecting runway 32 rights. And VNAV is actually behaving exemplary. Right now it's perfect. Uh, just keep an eye on it on approach. Well, I've already sort of modified it and fixed it, but... Uh, okay, E72 Echo, contact Langen Radar, 135765, expedite descent. Uh-oh. Not me, at least. Don't tell me that was me. He's very quick, this guy. Expedite descent, uh, can you confirm that uh, frequency again for me? I'll pack a 372 echo. 135, that's 165. Imagine being called when you're on what you mean like you're getting called off standby. I doubt there's uh, I get called now. But we have to have the phone on all the way until that time. I ha it has happened to me, I got called at 10 o'clock once to position an aircraft that diverted. It's like, oh great, thanks. <laughs> 10 o'clock at night. So we had to get a taxi, uh, and then uh, about two and a half hours in a taxi. We landed about one in the morning. Going three one, we sent to reach flight level 200 at border. Descent flight level 200 by border for Euro Wings. Delta Kilo, contact Langen Radar 135, decimal 65, goodbye. 135, decimal 65, Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, choose. Uh, Langen, good evening, Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, descending flight level 200 to be leveled by Poda. Oh, Alpaca uh, 8, Delta Kilo, Langen, good evening, identify you can continue descent flight level 1102, reach at Kubak. Send flight level 110 to be level at Copac, Alpac 8, Delta Kilo. Perfect, so we'll keep 110. We'll leave that restriction in to be level at uh, Poda and then 110. Now we're going to put below because we already want to be at 100 for that straight in. So there we are, we've got two restrictions in. Uh, VNAB's only going to concentrate on that first restriction. So, right, yeah, one Fox 200 below at Poda, and then it will actually plan to be level, which is correct. It's trying to be as efficient as possible, um, and then it'll initial an idle path descent from that top of descent point. We don't want it to do that though, because it wants us to continue the descent. So what I'm going to do is, when we get into Poda, is push out into vent once, and then the aircraft will descend at a thousand feet per minute until it captures the descent path. Contact Langen Radar, 118 goodbye. There we are, so there's FMC speed, it should level off now. This is ex this is exactly how the real 737 works, absolutely exactly. There's no difference between what the Zebo mod's doing right now and the real aircraft. And it'll stay level until it reaches this new top of descent point, but if I push out into vent, we should get a thousand foot per minute rate of descent, and there we are, there's the new path based off us descending. So, I've been very critical of, of VNAV so far, but right up to this point from top of descent, it has been absolutely perfect. It's just when we were changing the, uh, or modifying the routing, the new estimated altitude after modification was, was off, but right now, this is, is, is 
there is zero difference between the, the real NG and what this has just done. Zero. It is bang on. Blanket radar. Uh, correction, blanket radar, Eurorink 3 1, uh, SS or 7 2. Oh, you're, you're being very. You're praising me all my German. <laughs> Wind. Schnell! <laughs> I need location German bits. Eurorink 3 1, Bangen, good evening, identified, continue descent flight, level 1 1 0. Uh, Dante, very, very random question. Have you ever considered making our packet airways a virtual airline on things like V... V what? Was it V emphasis? Just to be honest, I'd love to see that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's always been an unofficial airline, but recognised, uh, I think, amongst a lot of people that use Vatsim. Um, I don't know. I think there were some suggestions to officially register it, but... I personally... I think with virtual airlines, airlines that you have to have a route structure and do certain routes, I think... Most people, most of the members would certainly say that they kind of like this ability just to jump in and use the call sign. I don't know. I'll certainly, I'm certainly open to feedback on that. More than happy to register it. Typical German efficiency so far. The Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, uh, current indicated 284 knots. Okay, Delta Kilo, Roger, maintain speed 280 Greater. 280 Greater, back 8 Delta Kilo. So that's fine, that's our profile, or cost index of 30 is, is giving us 284 knots, so we'll just leave it at that, which is 280 knots or Greater. I, I really enjoy flying at night sometimes, just something very calm and cool about it, uh, especially live time, live weather, but I will... Again, I always prefer, appreciate no, the feedback. I mean, I don't have all fun at the moment, so... Yeah, Moy, good morning, that one I know. Good night, good evening. Danke. Hello, Fezzi. Not long got back from Paphos. Fantastic flyback on the 75 into Manchester just shows uh, what great engineering and maintenance can do to an aircraft that never felt 25 years old. Well, an aircraft that's well looked after and well maintained will, will fly for 50 years, no problem. So now we've recaptured our profile. This is to make the restriction to be. Uh, that's interesting. So we have discovered a little bug. Remember, I put that restriction in a co bag to be at or below uh, 110. It seems to have disappeared. It just says 100 now. We'll put that back in now. It won't change the profile because remember VNAV wanted us there below it anyway at 100. So where it went. <sighs> Encountered a Vulcan device loss error. X-Plane cannot continue running and will now quit. Yay! Please just submit the auto crash report form. I have not had a Vulcan device loss error in over a year. Uh, I'll pack up 8 Delta Kilo, uh, our sims crash, just to let you know. Thanks a lot for the ATC. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. Damn it! I've not had any problems like that for so, so long. Oh. Damn it, well... We're not going to end it like that, are we? Let's, what do you want to see, guys? I would say Gatwick Challenge, but it takes so long to load in Gatwick. Oh, dear. Autosave. Oh, what? Of course. Let's try again. I could try doing the autosave. It should be working. Now, if I load up in... Let me try the autosave function. I've not had a Vulcan device loss error in so long. Like... I don't think I've ever had one during a stream, an actual Vulcan... Um, oh, sorry, oh, I, need, I need to force shut down and explain, hold on. Because it's still saying um, it's running in the background. I haven't had a crash in ages. Let me just force shut down Steam. Hold on, that's why it's not... Opening, X organizer. That might upset the control. Well, if I can carry on offline, that's it. Remember, start of engines running. Paul, thank you so much for letting me. Yeah. 
That's very good. Right, I'm relaunching. Uh, explain now. Connecting. There we go. It's firing up. You should be able to see that there. So yeah, if we load up in... Uh, what was... Where were we? We were approaching... I'm trying to think. We were approaching Copag. What's going to be the nearest airport to Copag? I'm just having a look here on my Navigraph charts here. On route. So if I open... A, oh, look. Copag. Uh, what airport's there? Oh, no. I think really it is the nearest one there. I think we're near, no, we're near Poda, weren't we? Echo Delta Lima Papa. Echo Delta Lima Papa. Let's go there. Paderborn. Two, four. Engines running. Okay. I don't think I need to do anything else. This is where pretty much we were. Starting. Let's see what happens. I haven't had a Vulcan crash, guys, for over a year. Uh, I've not had that loss, Vulcan loss of memory thing come up. That's really strange. Have a lot during night flights, really? <laughs> San Francisco, Anthony. Outrageous. If this is a, I think this will work. Because I am using the auto save function. See what happens. Um, it'd be very rude of me, though, to just pop online on VATSIM in controlled airspace close to the airport, though. I might continue offline. Uh, yeah, I need. I, I guys can't wait to get a new PC. I think the CPU I've got is good, but I think that's the main. Um, it's the bottleneck for my build, essentially. Maybe some trade sim. I don't have time. I need to get food, dinner. Do you have Kaitak? No, Kaitak. I want to do a stream into there, but it's um, always. Um, I think it's a bit of a pain to get installed. I'll think about it. Yeah, let's have a look at G-Face. A fly plan is still filed. Oh, it's nearly done. It shouldn't take too long to load because there's no ortho. Anything to install. Done with preloading. Let's see what happens. Space Shuttle Challenge. Preparing worlds. Ooh, here we are in Paderborn. Come on, Zebo. Do you want to load? Yes. Taruna, 18,100 feet. Yes, please. It does freeze everything for a second. Let's see what happens. Whoa! Zebo, you made me Bells jump. Oh, uh, music off. Uh, out hold. Oh, my days. <laughs> right, let me just let's just see what we could do here. Oh, my God. Baby, jump. Level change. Uh, I think we could be in business here. Let me reconnect, see what they say. I've still got the frequency tunes. This might really upset him. Right, I'm connecting to the network here. 280 knots, he said. Last caution, air conditioning. Off scheduled set. Langedale, we're still 0 to 80, standing Check for voting. Check straight away. With 2028, London, good evening, identified and continue descent to reach flight level 110 at Kopak. Descending over 110 to reach over Kopak, we're 0 to 0 to 8. Quantity 260, quantity Check 9, right around 3, 5, So where's that 110 restriction at Kopak? Could be a piss to say. Like nothing happened. So I've just set a VS here just to get us uh, 110 at Kopag. Got rid of the restrictions, so every else is set. Minimum is going to be set. Be cleared by approach, but you can already contact approach 13535. Let's try checking again. 13535, don't care, choose Felix 4900. Alangan, good night, I'm back at 8 Delta Kilo, and we just reloaded in after a sim crash. Descending 110 inbound to Getney, is that okay for you? <laughs> for poor guy. Felix, you're Kilo, say 
stepped on him. But Alpaca eight Delta Kilo, say again, you can uh, uh, Alpaca eight Delta Kilo. Good evening again. We just reloaded after a sim crash. Uh, we're setting one one zero to be level at Copag. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that's definitely okay. Contact Langer one three five three five. Goodbye. Uh, 13535, thank you very much. Uh, I'll back 8 down to Kilo. Bye. I've still got to reload loads of stuff. Here. High speed approved, uh, any lower level, FedEx 490. Traffic just 10 miles ahead FedEx of us. Good evening, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Descending flight level 110 to be leveled by Copag, speed 280 knots. Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo, long hello identified, could you speed 257 knots? Uh, 250 knots, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Nothing to see here, Perfect. all good. Uh, right, let's have a little look and see what we can do here. So let's have a look at the approach chart here, methodically, and uh, make sure everything is set up as we need it here for Cologne. So let's get that arrival in. So I've just literally been thrown back at the deep end without having, having uh, spat out at the end there. Hello Jack, not the right time to come in here and start nose butting me. Maintain present heading, expect RLS 3 2 right, Alpaca 8 Delta Kilo. Quality 260, what do you say, flatable 100? RLS 3 2 right. So frequency one active, courses 316 active, minimum 502, that need to be reset. I might just have to reload active sky. Line wire showing down, driving 0 to 0 on departure, passing 3,500 feet. Driving 0 to 0, I think we're in business, guys. Thousand ago. Checked. And we're on a heading already. Excellent. Well done, auto save. Oh, let me just check the weather there. Not sure if that's. I mean, Active Sky never closed down. This is live when it's active. I can't see much though. And there is wind. Yeah, I'm pretty shot confident Active Sky is still working here. Yeah. It's in live mode, Jules. Yeah, just check that now. Thanks for that. Fly live. Uh, I need to reset as well. So much work, so much going on. Anyway, we're on the heading. Fly Live's coming back to life. Well done, Zebo's autosave. I don't even know how difficult that must be to program. Right, anyway, uh, 110. That's our cleared level. Down the heading. So only traffic five miles ahead of us here, so we'll probably get further production speed, but we'll comply with our speed. Fuel's fine, four tons. Sucker belts. It's off schedule to six. It's going to be fixed now. Descent flight level 80, I'll pack 8 delta kilo. Vertical speed, miles feet per minute. You legend, Zebra. How did you? How do you do an auto save? Yes, I mean it. It's pretty clever how it works. I mean, it had pretty much all the variables set. Every there, all I had to change was the minimums. That was it. Only the minimums, and it spat me in a bit of a high speed situation, which is pretty good. Hooray for auto save! I think this is the first ever time on a live stream we've rescued a flight. Got that 4,500 foot restriction. Let's change. Uh, Domino Mosina, do full flight sims crash in mid like Yes, they do. They do crash. Sometimes spectacular. I once when I was when I was instructing. Um, we we were doing a rejected takeoff, and during the rejected takeoff, the entire hydraulic system. The the jacks were just stood on froze, and the whole thing froze. And you don't actually fully realise it when you sat there, but when you're doing an RTO or an action where you're decelerating, it's quite a steep attitude it's set at to sort of simulate that deceleration. And when it froze, it was like, you actually realise you're held in your straps. We are like, ah! Oh. <laughs> Had to wait about 30 minutes for them to uh, shut it down. But they do break.
So I'm not so worried about that pr um, profile because I think. Two two zero dots, I'm packing eight dots kilo. Um, I think um, we're going to probably end up going in this uh, direction anyway, not towards Rarix. Continue present heading. Ten five one nine zero. Continue present heading two four zero east flight seven zero one. Oh, yeah, post cruise checks now. Oh, all out the sink now. 980 fuel, four pumps. Three on board lights. Expect light goes on. Uh, Anger bank set to 25 degrees, pressurization set. Seatbelts are on recall. Checks complete. There is Cologne dead ahead. So it's very, very, very busy. Sort of, you can sort of tell that we're not going to go straight at, uh, here towards Rarix. I mean, you can see out the window. Aircraft on there on the left, and there's that traffic Gearing just ahead of us. As well. If not, we are in a position where we can quickly configure for a more of a if you continue straight, you could land on runway 24. Yeah, straight in. In an emergency, if both engines went pop now. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Looks like there's a party off that runway as well. That's all just taken off. Ah, dash is good, yeah. So it's better to be a few clouds at 3,000. Oh no, it is actually Cav OK now. I'll just check the latest missile, so the weather is actually pretty accurate. Well, Andy's still here. We still need to do the um, approach and landing check. This should be too short. Hello, Raggy, Bess, and Michael. Hope you're doing well. Right, let's see what happens next. The aircraft going off to the left. Get a rough idea what we're doing on this little map. Oh my days! God, how many, how many aircraft okay, there? Left heading one three zero degrees. I'll pack eight delta kilo. So we're now going downwind. Sending flight level seven zero. Oh, so the boat's lost the magenta line. Let's just go direct to eight six five ourselves. But shouldn't spin the magenta line up like that. And I'm going to get rid of our 4,500 foot restriction now. There you go, that's going to completely change the profile. I love this. Don't have that in real life, but it gives you a rough idea of where you are. Not super, super busy. Uh, Edrim, still vectors, yes we are. Descent flight level 7 0, I'll back 8 down to Kilo. Uh, 1 to 1, 0, 5, 0, call sign only, I'll back 8 down to Kilo, choose. Want to go? 1000 to go. There's aircraft turning final ahead there. Look. 3,000 feet, 200 degrees, sir. Scandinavian tip of the. Director, Alpaca, 8 delta kilo. Okay, there's a kilo, Director, 15. Perfect. All looking good then. So it's down to 7-0. Uh, almost been wearing Eric, sir. Steve, Steve Mayer. 20, 10. God, this guy's unbelievable. Thanks for the 80 quid, buddy. Your choice was Jack Fund or PC Fund. <laughs> well, if it was based on the Jack Fund, he'd be 
four times the size as he is at the moment. You guys always do the jack fund. Go to the PC fund and a stronger uh, processor. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And to all the guys you've been on the scale today. Really. Thank you very much, guys. And on that note, I'll, I'll mute you all now. Your generosity has been up too much today. I'll mute you early. <laughs> Thank you. Again, Steve, you continue to support as well, buddy. So when you sort downwind like this, just trying to work you uh, work out where you are in the sequence. We've got traffic crossing behind, uh, crossing in front and below us. So it, you know we're not we're not going to get pushed in front of him. So you know again profile wise, this nine nine nine. This is correct. This is what it would say in reality, uh, but. Um, not actually that far below profile. It's just about updating that magenta line based on the existing arrival of line, trying to build a picture. In reality, you could ask A to see how many more track miles, but um, yeah, sort of see what we're going to be doing already. Thank you, clear for the approach, and speed 118 until 6. Fezzi, for the skipper, did you know that the trim wheels on the 737 are both made by two completely different manufacturers? No idea, Fezzi. Absolutely no idea. Nine, four, three, four, three, four, right, 290, 3000 feet, feet clear ILS, uh, 32 right, Felix 49, Tango. Have a car, 8 data kilo, reduce minimum clean speed. Uh, minimum clean speed, I'll pack 8 delta kilos, 285 knots. That's perfect, minimum clean is good for us because it means we don't. If they start using 180, we have to get flaps out. Uh, it's not so efficient. Uh, Flyboy, is my internet battle? Is the stream a bit choppy? Uh, it, I've had no problems here. The whole stream has been. I've had no drop frames at all, so there we go. It should be all silky smooth for anyone watching. Good internet here. Uh, 350.14 is out, type of bugs fixed, excellent. So you see that profile's coming back towards us now, but that's obviously based on us doing that entire full arrival, which we're not going to do. We're on the vectors, so we're not exactly following it, that's why I've up updated the magenta line. Better get the airport taxi charts in action. Stream's good in the US, excellent. Looks like most people have got a, a smooth stream. Thanks, guys. Right, better do the approach check this session. Frequencies triple one one. Verify the fixed rings to the correct runway, three two right. Identify. Right heading two nine zero degrees, descend five thousand feet, QNH one zero two six, out back eight delta kilo. 5,000 feet set, so QNH 1026. Let's go to the vertical go. speed here. Actually, you know what? We'll go level change. Not far off there. Uh, passing 7,300 5,000 feet, and the standby altimeter is set. You better finish the approach checklist, so Indu Kilo Echo November. And we're just missing it on Jim's side or Andy's side. Standby instruments are set. Course is 316, 316. That'll do us. I'll have the approach checklist, please, Andy. Approach checklist. Altimeters and instruments. Set cross checked. Approach A. Checked and set. Approach checklist complete. Sweet. So now we can find out the final approach track. Just 316. Extend the center line from the FAF. FAF is Rarix. Bring that to the top. 316. Execute. That just gives us a nice long magenta line for us to follow. And we shouldn't be too far off the profile now. Beautiful vectors, really nice. Right, there is the airport. Three, two, right. Haven't been cleared approach yet. Um, so the reason I extended the centre line is the localizers we all well know uh, doesn't quite stretch out 
far enough in X-Plane 11. It's just a limitation with the sim. Easily would pick it up at this That's distance here. So I can use LNAV at least. There it goes. Look, bing, just a bit. 20 miles. That's the range of the DME in the localised ILS. It uh, should be able to pick it up much further out. Now back at 8, Delta Kilo, we clear to instant localise where it's heading. Delta Kilo, Kilo, Sports, on the Right, it's at 3,000 feet, clear dial 3, 2, right, I'm back at 8 down to Kilo. Perfect, I think you just That's forgot. 8 down to Kilo, speed 2, 3, so not augment 1, 3, DB. I'm oh, sorry, I'll back 8 down to Kilo, just say again. I have to speed up to speed 2, 3, so not augment up to 30. Uh, 230 knots or greater until 13 miles out back at 8 delta kilo. Alright, speeding up a little bit. Uh, perfect. So I think he might have just forgot to clear us on the approach there. So 315 set, 230 knots until 13. So I'm just going to accelerate there. That's going to help with separation for him. You just want to be careful this, you don't want to, 230 is okay until 13, but you don't want to get, end up high, if you end up high on the flight circle, you'll struggle, you struggle to bleed the speed off there. I'm just going to stay just below the glide slope to allow us to slow down. Don't want to get too okay, close, it's only 5 bars zero, ahead that six, aircraft, zero, that's enough separation. Let's see over there. Uh, seven, zero, Good approach. 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 Approaches on. Six Fox at Roma, contact a good day. Six Fox at Roma, flying one four zero. One four zero, we're using six Fox at Roma. Localizer, glide slope capture, missed approach altitude five thousand feet. Is okay. Then you will reduce final post. Uh, final approach speed out back at 8 delta kilo. So we went from being 230 knots till 13 to now wanting to go to our final approach speed. It's 140 knots. <laughs> right, let's go flap 1. Straight to flap 5. We'll book the flap 5 speed. Better get some speed break out as well because he's only 5 miles ahead. That's from one extreme to the other. That was a bit unusual. Look, uh, 10 heading 350 to 3000 feet and cleared ILS approach on week 32 right. He's flight so speed break one. flap 5, that's going to help us. Slow right down. Now back eight down to kilo fully established. Back eight data kilo contact Kilo Tower one two four nine seven five. One two four nine seven five. Now back eight down to kilo. Choose. Uh, uh, Tom Ludson, ILS in X plane is based on FAA and it is 18 miles according to Austin. Note that distance is the distance of which you can use it, but the actual range of the ILS localizer is far in excess of that. Um, I mean, you could get vectored onto an ILS outside of 25, 30 miles, and you can still see the localizer. So what Austin's getting blown up with there is this the DOC, the, where you can actually physically use it to navigate. The, you, the instrumentation will pick it up 40, 25, 50, 60 maybe. miles out easily. Uh, if that's the case. Right. Speed break back up. Better check it with Tower. Tower, good evening. I'll pack at 8 Delta Kilo minus 3, 2, right, 7 miles. 1980, 9, 9, 2, 7, 0, 6 knots, 1, 8, 2, 4, clear the immediate takeoff. Clear the immediate takeoff, we can't so on the speed break. Tau, good job. Tau, pack at 8 delta kilo. I pack at 8 kilo, um, 8 delta kilo, Cologne Tower, good evening. You are able for um, visual swing over one way, 3 to left. Ah, why not? I'll pack 8 delta kilo. We could not do that in real life. I pack at 8 delta kilo, then um, visual swing over is approved um, for one way, 3 to left. Uh, wind check 250 degrees, 4 knots, 1 departure ahead. Perfect, switching over to 3-2 left now, I'll back at 8 Delta Kilo. So in reality, we could not do this in real life at my operator. We can do visual swings, but not to a runway that's much shorter. Uh, it has to be around the same length. Uh, it can be beyond the threshold, but we can't do it at night either. So this is illegal <laughs> at my operator. 
wouldn't be able to do this. So I've recycled the fly directors. Uh, I'll detune the ILS because this is incorrect information. And the flight directors. Uh, but it's fun. Let's do it because it's fun. Uh, right, we'll configure. Get it out. 15. Thank you very much. 121725. I must stress, I, I'd get fired if I do this at work. <laughs> two reds, two whites. And flat 30. Excuse me whilst I don't do that. Three two left clear to land out back eight delta kilo. Right, set the files of feedback and three whites. About fifty seven percent, so our target N one. Watch our rate of descent. Turkish eight kilo mic was one way three two right continue on delta. There we are, so off the center. Speed's a bit low. Going around quality zero, no landing clear. So switching runway, got rid of the flight directors. I mean, ideally be at flat 40 as well here, uh, on a break going to use 3. This is why we don't switch runways to a considerably shorter runway, because we've not completed the landing forward, sorry. Uh, but it's very fun to do. Uh, so yeah, this is a short runway, much shorter runway. Yeah, if I did this at work I'd be fired. <laughs> it's cool. Two reds, two whites. Oh, landing checklist. Let's see if we've got time to do it. Landing checklist. A quick Start handy. switches. <laughs> Continuous. Four. Recall. Checked. Speed brake. Armed green lights. Landing gear. Down three green. Uh, Auto brake. Uh, is uh, set. Flat. 30 30 green lights. Landing light. On. Landing checklist complete. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. Oh, my days. Minimums. Yeah, well, that's disregard Minimums. because it's the wrong runway. That's why we don't do them unless we've briefed it. Please annoy us. Kilo irons. 4,900. 100. Check, close, off the altitude. I want to float here, it's much shorter. Not bad, 148 speed breaks up. Let's reverse, not coming up. Reverses. Yeah, yeah, reverse screen. 100 knots. 80 knots. And 60. Gentlemen, welcome to Cologne on a highly illegal step over maneuver. Oh my goodness me. We'll vacate right at Bravo and we'll brief this. Oh my days. Well, we made it down. Well, hello, Hamza Line 326. We're holding short. 24 Echo. I helped ATC out. That's it. Hamza Line 326. Cologne Tower. Good evening. I call you back. Okay. Cool. Vacated. Ah, my goodness me, not a good place Why to vacate. Line up three kilo whiskey, line up in red, one way, two, four. Just wait. Line up in red, two, four, on FS, three kilo whiskey. Easy, seven, zero, one, wind, two, five, zero degrees, four knots, one way, three to right, clear to land, vacate alpha, four. We'll talk about side steps in a second. Good land, three, two, right, uh, vacate alpha, four, east flight, seven, zero, one. I don't think ATC planned for this. Three, two, right. With a 2028 Cologne Tower, good evening, you are yeah. able for visual... Why is he not going? Come on, you can go. I'm not going anywhere. Unable. With a uh, uh, 2028, roger. Continue approach, wind check 250 degrees. Well, I can't vacate the runway. Okay, press 3, good, I see you're good, you're good. Uh, tower pack 8, Delta Kilo. Uh, we're on the end of 3-2 uh, left at Bravo. Uh, there's an aircraft directly ahead. Alpaca 8, Delta Kilo, Cologne Tower. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Cologne, contact Elephant 12172, bye bye. 12172, I'll back at 8 Delta Kilo, bye. Carnage! Okay, gate Delta 22 via Alpha, Mike Orange, Scandinavian 825, thanks. April, good day, I'll back at 8 Delta Kilo. Uh, just vacated 32 left at Bravo. Well, back at 8 Delta Kilo, turn ground, hello. Can you um, get a bit to the right? Um, on Tango, so the aircraft in front can pass you. A firm, I'll back at 8 Delta Kilo. Thank you. I wasn't sure where he was going though. The carnage. So, uh, very interesting approach there. Uh, down, your wings for five, zero, forming the uh, music. Didn't want to do that one. Wanted my taxi and music. Going five, four, five, zero, seven, current ground, hello. Uh, side four, steps then. Again. Fine, you can do them. But not at night, not onto a runway considerably shorter, not one that you've briefed, not one that has uh, performance implications. So yeah, I only did that to help our ATC on Fatsim. In reality, we'd never accept uh, that sidestep. Uh, we'd say unable. 
continue, and I guess most likely a missed approach would be executed. But yeah, I think we're going to go probably Tango Delta and then all the way around here. But no, very interesting to see. Um, side steps, uh, yeah, Manchester Airport would be uh, a place where you'd uh, often do side steps, uh, and you can potentially brief there. Grand, Grand Canary. Uh, I didn't mean that. That's um, a bit unfortunate. Uh, do you have any gate wishes, or does do you does you care about the gate? Well, I'm happy to go the long way around Tango Delta and then Alpha to the main uh, terminal. Uh, okay, 8 a kilo, roger that. Um, that that's going to be a long way. Taxi for Nova, Tango Delta, hold short Alpha. Tango Delta, hold short Alpha, uh, Alpha 8 Delta Kilo. So I couldn't really go the other way because it was an aeroplane. <laughs> yeah, I know. I meant that you go just a little bit to the right so you can pass here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can't no, do not. that. <laughs> well,. Um, that would be the exiting the taxiway. I think he, that's what he wanted me to do there. So I think he wanted to be sort of go like this onto the stand. But uh, I was just doing what I thought would be legal. Yeah, I don't need those emojis. I think I did okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, we get a great clear in the airport. We can start a step there. But yeah, uh, you wouldn't get away with doing what I did there. Well, not my operator. Alpha 3, Delta, hold short of runway 32 right. Execute the approach where you will be executed. Well, that's what I was worried about. You go way past me. Blue Alpha Alpha Three Delta and hold short of runway three two right. I mean, you will do the side step to three two left. <laughs> anyway, it's not that super long a taxi anyway. Uh, it's sort of like Kurt Barcelona every day. Turn ground. Hello, taxi gate Alpha One Two via Echo and Bravo. There we are. There's a UPS cargo stand. We're catching up with another aircraft anyway. It looks like. First time in Cologne. So they're using the cross runway to depart from, that's pretty cool. Excellent. So there we are. Uh, we've got a whole shot of the Alpha taxiway just here as well. We're happy to take a kilo round. Yeah, I just wanted to give you that, so uh, take the GAT to your left, sorry. No worries, we'll park up with that briefing and I think. Bit of congestion here. I think right, it's kind of deep needs to pass. It looks like uh, an aircraft just popped into uh, Delta 22. Can we hang right to them still? See if we can actually end up getting there. It's a bit of a, bit of a queue here. Hey, good day. We just need a 2-8 vacate. Ah, look, there's the problem. We've got 6 Lima across runway 32 right. So I think we've aircraft... We've got 6 Lima crossing runway 32 right. We've got aircraft here, look. We can't actually taxi that way because they're blocking the taxiway. No, that's, a, that's a bugger, that is. Of course, carnage. So, Halt Tower, obviously, uh, sidestepping onto the runway, but it's caused carnage with ground. Um, I mean, I couldn't exactly, I think he wanted to be just to give away and bravo, then go in this way, but I couldn't do that. Really. Carnage. Might have to log off, we'll see. With a 2028, current ground hello, taxi via Echo, hold short Alpha 5. You opted for the long way around, I did. <laughs> I'll admit. So, it's, I, did, I did, yep. Carnage. But no, the AT was actually fantastic. Uh, so, I was just double checking, sidestep approach if you're interested in my operator. Um, we can do them. Uh, one, I have several requirements, okay? Side step is to be requested by ATC, not by us. Uh, the landing runway threshold has to be further away or equal to the one we're landing at. Uh, daytime VMC, nope. Uh, Pappy's in sight, yes. Visual landing runway, yes. Um, and we have to also be fully configured prior to the move as well. Gear and flaps, so we didn't do any of that. Alpha 8 Delta Kilo, continue taxi via Alpha, hold short Alpha 4. Alpha, hold short Alpha 4, Alpha 8 Delta Kilo. Perfect. Perfect, on that check down, thanks for the service, great event, bye bye. See ya. 
cool little airport this one. Uh, completely free to download. There was some the payware. Like the the but everyone south said no, this one, Bravo. yeah, the free one's good. It's, it's really good. But no, we don't finish a live stream until we're on stand. Current ground, uh, good evening, Austrian 6 piece kiosk vacated 3 2. Oh, I can't believe though, we yeah, saved it though. Don't forget yeah, the sim crashed 30 minutes ago. That Blue. Vulcan crash. Blue I've never had that before. Blue, and credit to Zippo's autosave function, it worked pretty Austin much perfectly. Whiskey, Oscar, so he's going on to Echo, Tango, but we were told to stay on to Alpha, Lima. hold short of Alpha 4, so we're going in a straight line here to make sure there's no one Tango, heading directly Tango, towards Bravo, us. Short, Lima, Which there is. Didn't say Alpha Echo 4, did he? Taxi via Alpha 4, Echo, Alpha 3, hold short, runway 2 right. Taxi via Alpha 4, Echo, Alpha 3, hold short, runway 2 right. Ah, okay, so he's turning at Alpha 4, got you. Alpha 5, we have to 0 to 8. So he's been instructed to go in via Alpha 4, so he needs to make a left turn now. Otherwise, there will be a conflict. And then we're giving way at Alpha 4. Well coordinated. Uh, the uh, taxi traffic uh, coming from the right now? Uh, yeah, yes, he's coming from yeah left, however you want to see it. Uh, it's the Boeing 77 now behind you. Do you have si uh, do you have inside? Yes, it's a Right, one one to one behind traffic, push the pool facing east. Push the pool facing east, and one one to one. So he's the, that's the traffic going in by Alpha 4. Uh, there we go. Echo, Hello, step back for push, I call you. The Lufthansa. I know. <laughs> I don't want to say I'm holding it Alpha 4 now. Perfect. There we're holding Alpha 4. We'll get there. We'll get there. And Alpha 8 Delta Kilo holding Alpha 4. Okay, I did a kilo gain. Now you can continue via Alpha 4, Echo, hold short, Alpha 5. Alpha 4, and we'll make a right turn here, Echo, hold short, Alpha 5, up back 8, Delta Kilo. So switching taxiways to Echo, and holding short of Alpha 5. And yes, it estimated pushback time for Austrian 1, 3, November. I wonder if you can actually do this. I don't know, maybe minutes. 5 to 10 minutes, sorry. Oh, bye bye. I'm not sure if you can actually do that. But sorry. There's a taxi line. What? Did that guy just say estimated pushback time? How long to wait? He said 5 10 minutes, he just went bye bye. <laughs> he done enough. <laughs> uh, Andrea, Captain, can you please show how to do the mighty zipper out? Auto save is very simple. Make sure you start with engines running, and when you reload it, I think it saves. Well, someone around to answer chat. A duration around every four or five minutes. And now I've noticed on an update, it actually gives you the information. Such as, um, where you departed from, where your arrival is, what your current restriction was. And they work perfectly. I switched to Echo, which is just. Oh, I don't know. There's not probably a, a, a plan going on here that we're unaware of. I wish we'd stayed on Alpha, though. He obviously has aircraft to get off the stand as well. To taxi on my bike, confirm which direction you're facing. That's what I love about this fact, so guys. I see Lufthansa, I see other tail here, got Wizz Air, but amongst that, look at the alpaca tail. There it is, look, represent, sir. <laughs> okay, but you are able for Alpha, aren't you? Uh, yes, I'm able for Alpha. Longest taxi in ever. Lufthansa 7 over my mic, taxi holding point, runway 24, via Alpha, Alpha 4, Echo, Alpha 3, hold short, runway 3 to right. Taxi via Alpha, Alpha 4, Echo, and Alpha 3, and down to runway 24, and holding short, runway 3 to right, Lufthansa 7 over my mic. Cologne ground, hello, you're in 6 Fox Romeo vacated, runway 3 to uh, Michael, this is on a PFD, why does it say landing altitude? FMC Fox reset to the ground. ground um, so we have loaded the FMS. Well, as soon as we loaded the FMC Bravo, uh, with Lima, the departure Lima, airport, Fox it has the elevation data. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't know what it is, so we can't get that little yellow hatch line. Flight 1121, taxi, confirm 3 to right. FM 3 to full length. 
Sein one one two one taxi via Alpha to holding point, runway 3 to right and hold short runway 2 4. Let's see what's going on here. So they're taxiing aircraft out via Echo, so we're going to have to wait for him, him. And I should think there's aircraft that need to push back as well. Oh, Carlos, one, five, three, seven, fast, 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 Super busy. He's having to work this out. It's quite tough because. With a zero two eight taxi to stand Delta two eight via Alpha Mike Yellow November. Goddamn Germans and their coloured lines. Delta two eight stand Alpha Mike Yellow November. That's quite complex. Just gotta try and work out inbounds and outbounds. But it's important that you stick with your line for big tip clearance. Delta 28 stand Alpha Mike Yellow in November. We just have to two sectors. <laughs> ah, negative. Stand Delta 28 via Alpha 5 Alpha Mike Yellow November. Sorry, it's confusing. Alpha 5 Alpha Mike Yellow in November. We just have to see the So, different color lines look. I think they need the numbers though. Air Fox 5 2, uh, hold position for now. No, it's just Mike's wingspan information. Oscar in 6 Whiskey Oscar, any gate with it? Gosh, you see uh, the colors on there. It's yeah, very Bravo different to my operator's charts. Oscar in 6 Whiskey Oscar, Roger, taxi to gate Bravo 17. Oh no, it actually Bravo has the, not the physical colors, Bravo. but it simply says the colors here. It says Bravo uh, Bravo 4, Oscar. where 2 is on here. It's uh, blue, but it doesn't actually give the Bravo colors here. Does it not give the colors Bravo on the Jefferson chart that it does on, on our operator's charts? That's where she makes it really confusing. Can't actually see the colors. Unless I'm missing it. Listen, the cargo 8779R, Köln ground, hello. Taxi 2 stand, Echo 2 3 via Alpha 4 Alpha. How long will we be taxiing for? 15 minutes. Alpha 4, Alpha. The color isn't indicated in the Jefferson charts. That's what it is. On the uh, uh, nav uh, blue charts, we have it. It's much clearer. We have all the colors depicted. I mean, no, you'll see the colors anyway. So Giant 1121, contact tower 124, that's the 975, bye bye. 124, Delta Mike Alpha, rufen Sie Tor auf 1, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, Delta 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, yeah, it's a bit of a Alpha, Alpha 3, Delta, hot bit of a do oh, I said dodgy right. side. It's not uh, catered Alpha. for this amount of traffic. Uh, with a zero two eight, I told you, Mike Yellow, make a swing over to Mike Blue now, please. <laughs> Probably doesn't have the seat already. Heading for Mike Blue, we got the zero eight. Alpha eight, Delta Kilo, uh, behind the Air Fox A three twenty one, crossing right to left, taxi to gate Bravo one zero straight ahead. Uh, after the Air France, uh, Airbus A321 passes from right to left, we'll taxi to stand Bravo 10. Now back A Delta Kilo. It's Air Fox, not Air France. Oh, Air Fox, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Air Fox. Well, I don't know what that is. I guess that's that. Air Fox. Smart wings, uh, two echo turns. Anyway, Bravo 10, down, nice and simple for us. Number four. Let's get the we'll AP over ready. Air France, I thought he said, not Air Fox. Give way to the Airbus, I know, outrageous, Lauren. Kind of which way he's going, so better just hold off here. Um, you already requested, and I already told you to stand by, so please. Uh, right Let's go. Very happy traffic situation for Cologne, it's uh, too much traffic. Again. Absolute James Warren, that's why we need Granite so Tower. Yeah, nice yeah, having yeah. a coffee with you, mate, yesterday. Cologne, Granite, good evening. Stand tonight, stand by, stand. So coming in Alpha north. here, it's really quite hard to identify the stat. I need my supervision. Where is Bravo? Bravo one zero. I think there it is. Straight ahead. Look. Two two nine. Go ahead. Request push back. Delay to two nine. 
Yeah, this is not our current ground. Hello, stand by for post icon. Standing by, like now. During 4507, we made it. Face Finally. Mike Blue Line. Push it through facing east, Mike Blue Line. Yeah, don't Mike come on, stand this quickly. Mike Blue Line. Push it through facing east, Mike Blue. Push it through facing east, Mike Blue. Push it through facing east, Mike Blue. Bye, 738. Ground, good evening, I'll back at 16 Delta Bravo at Alpha 4, 3, 2, right. Stop! There we are. Pocket brake set. Uh, we've got two blues, one red. Engines are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, and we took a full sim reload as well. Welcome to uh, Cologne, Germany. We made it. Amazing. A successful sector, apart from the crash. <laughs> Not the actual. I don't want anyone tuning in thinking we actually crashed. We've yet to actually crash on a, a stream, apart from the one we're, you know, messing around flying the uh, Seneca one time. But uh, now we have an impeccable safety record here at Alpaca Airways. Uh, very nice, very, very good. Uh, and uh, overall, the Supermod did a good job. Um, there was a minor issue with VNAV uh, modifying the route. The actual descent path was quite nice. It was until they explained through a bit of a wobbly. Uh, but no, uh, looking um, uh, looking good for this version. And you've got a couple of other updates, I think, that have been released <laughs> whilst we were streaming while Zebo was fixing, the, I think, the issues we were having there. But very good. Uh, moin moin. Uh, yes, uh, I've heard that thing on Google, the Google speech thing, where it tried to say something in German, that win, win, win thing. But that is a good day to you as well. Um, the A300 gear up landing, that doesn't count, Astrogy, that doesn't count. Uh, LaJules, I'm pretty sure you nosedive with the Airbus once. Yeah, that's the same one there. How many finds, finds of the taxi? Probably several. Yeah, and the, the um, I must stress, you know, um, is it because my boss might be watching, I'm only joking. Those sidestep approaches, the one we did there, we do do sidestep approaches, but we would never have been able to do the sidestep approach we did there because we could only do it my operator. Daytime VMC, we have to be fully configured to land with the landing flap there. The threshold uh, has to be equal or further away, but most importantly, that runway we landed on is half the length of the one we were planning on landing on. No performance calculations completed. So, so yeah, illegal swing over. It was the jewels, but very enjoyable. And it was all stable, to be fair, by the gate, which is... Which is good. Um, yeah, very long taxi. Made <laughs> war and peace on the way in there. Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, we got in. That's the important thing. And uh, yeah, the Zebo uh, auto save function, fantastic. That really, really uh, worked quite nicely. Uh, cool. So yeah, uh, impeccable ATC uh, today from the Vats of controllers, especially that apron controller there, uh, dealing with all that traffic, trying to get us on the stand. So uh, superb job to Vats of Germany. They always do an amazing job uh, on the network. Um, every uh, single time anyway we're going to call it a day so let me uh, log off for now there we are disconnected thanks to everyone that joined in on the sector as well uh, from uh, Bergen I was trying to remember where we divided from here let me just finish doing a checklist here because we need uh, we've got old Andy to read our checklist so anti collision light off we'll do the full shutdown checklist uh, I won't do the secure checklist today because I'm going to do a replay as usual so that's all configured and uh, Andy, if you could give me the uh, shutdown checklist, please. Shutdown checklist. Fuel pumps. Uh, fuel pumps are off. Oh, I just stopped the music. <laughs> Electrical. Uh, it's on the APU, we'll leave it that way. Fasten belts. Uh, off. Window heat. Off. Probe heat. Off. Anti-ice. Off. Electric hydraulic pump. Off. Voice recorders. Auto. Air conditioning pack. Auto. Engine bleed. Uh, on. APU bleed. Off. Exterior lights. Got uh, logo steady and wheel well. Start switches. Off. Auto brake. Off. Speed brake. Down detent. Flaps. Up no lights. Parking brake. Set. Start levers. Cut off. Weather radar. Off. Transponder. 2000 standby. CVR circuit breaker. In. Cockpit door is unlocked. Shutdown checklist complete. Excellent, Andy. Thank you very much. That's what we do every day after we pulled on the stand. Uh, superb. Very, very uh, good indeed. Right, let's turn off Fly Live. The alerts are on. And uh, cue the funky replay music. Where are you? Mm, professional streamer, all ready to go here as usual. There we go. Right, it's only going to be about half an hour after we landed. Oh no, there we are, 46 minutes from the sim crash. That was a long taxi. 36, 29. 
it was 20 minutes on the ground there. Right, days. right anyway, we'll see what we can we'll try and see what we can see. Yeah, landing was fine for the shortness of the runway. There's the check, it's a little bit down slope as well. Not much, I kind of landed with crab, a bit of a crosswind, didn't put any rudder in. There we are. It's a bit late getting the reverses out, I was pressing the command, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't having any of it. Not a button. Guys care about though. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm gonna call it a day, guys. I need to go get food. I'm getting a little bit late here. I need eating. I need to eat. <laughs> Perfect, guys. So I'm just gonna turn the uh, funky music down here slightly as I put you on a, a position here so you can enjoy the. Uh, uh, approach to Cologne there. Uh, guys, as ever, thank you to uh, everyone that uh, has come to watch the stream here, to all my regular subscribers and viewers. Uh, as ever, don't forget to like the video on the way out, subscribe to stay up to the latest content. Uh, very generous, gener uh, very generosity, oh, I'm losing already. The generosity shown by some of you say again was off the scale, especially some of the members there. So yeah, uh, Tim Fraser donates £70, Burak £100, uh, it doesn't matter if you, no one donates or if you donate, those. those Silly, so I don't know what to say. I'll put them straight towards the PC, which is I'm ordering imminently uh, to, to hopefully get these issues uh, all rectified. Right hopefully, we'll have that before uh, Christmas, guys. Uh, all the members as well, thank you for the continued support. I'll see you all on Saturday. Uh, Friday as well, I hope to jump in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, fly into the. There's the side step look. Uh, hopefully, we'll jump into uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator just like have sent me a copy of their Palmer scenery, uh, which I, as I didn't purchase it, I'd like to give away a copy uh, to a lucky viewer as well. Uh, as ever, stay safe, and I'll see you on another live stream very soon. Bye bye for now.